What's good, everybody? Welcome to Dad Beats. We are in episode nine, and Dad Beats is where we talk about the joys and challenges of being a producer, a creator, a musician with responsibilities. Welcome. Today we have an amazing guest, Mr. Carlos Six July Brody. I highly, highly implore you, if you do not know who this man is, to get on your Google right now. Check out his discography. It's very extensive. <laughs> Uh, yeah. We were talking about how it's a challenge to even introduce this man because it's hard to pick a hit single. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> but um, you probably know some of his work, uh, definitely from, from the Bad Boys, uh, Bad Boy days when he was just really scorching them. I mean, we're talking about 24 Hours to Live with Mace. We're talking about, you know, know. Biggie Smalls, um, What's Beef? You know what I mean? Just, just classic, classic records. And, I mean, the list goes on. This man's worked with... Royce the Five Nine. Uh, once again, you know the whole Bad Boy camp. We're talking about Puff Daddy. We're talking about Black Rob. You know Biggie, Lil Kim, my baby, um, Mary, Mary J, <laughs> Mary J. Yeah, my baby. That's my baby. Yeah, so right we can there. go on for days and days. Welcome, Mr. Carlos Six July Brody. Let's clap it up for him, Man, y'all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Pleasure is mine, brothers. Pleasure is mine. And once again, my illustrious co-host, the King O. Caesar. What's good, man? How you doing today? I'm doing good, man. I had to go change my Captain America, you know what I'm saying, uh, pajamas <laughs> I had on. because you he, know. Had to, he had the Beats <laughs> uniform for real. Yeah, yeah, for real, you know. But nah, we we honored and, and it's a pleasure to have uh, Mr. Carlos on the podcast, man. Welcome here. I hope everybody is having yeah, a blessed you, day. Man. You know what I'm saying? What do you prefer to go by, bro? Like... Carlos, Car yeah, like a nickname. I mean, obviously, 6th July, but what, what's man, the easiest thing? Yeah. Everybody just call me Brody, man. Is it? Brody. <laughs> they just call me Brody. Yeah. yeah, T Brody, Brody, either one, six, it don't matter. I'm Word. answering all of them. It ain't out there. Yeah. <laughs> Word. So, yeah, man, uh, we were talking earlier, and I'm just like, man, where where do we start, bro? You have such such an extensive Ooh. journey in the music business. Um, you know, so, many, so many accolades. We're talking Grammys. We're talking, you know, platinum plaques. Um, yeah. so let's kind of go back to the beginning. Where, where are you from originally? I'm, I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. I'm actually a Stax Records baby. Um, my family, uh, I come from a family of singers. Uh, one of the singers was a main engineer at Stax. His name was uh, William Brown. He was one of the original Mad Lab as well, right? Um, mm -hmm. then my other uncle, uh, Bertram and Randy, Randy is still up and he was signed, signed to, um, Casablanca, uh, okay. Casablanca parachute, um, and he's still popping to this day. Uh, matter of fact, it's crazy, right? Because um, the Aaliyah "Care for You" sample, right? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. the group called the Newcomers. The Newcomers were two of my uncles, Randy and Bertram, wow. and that's Randy singing on that song, that Timberland sample for Aaliyah. You know, I don't know if you clear this, so my bad, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> That, well, that's so, what and, and it is, though. Memphis has just a, a tremendous music history. Just, I mean, just such a historical city. Um, yes. So I, I take it, you know, you were probably around the studios then when you were coming up and kind of learning the game. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm, they never mention it, but I'm in a mix of all of Memphis hip hop. Like from the Al Capone days, like we were producing Al Capone in like 92 when he first got signed to uh, uh, Eli's company through EMI. Mm -hmm. Me, Al Capone, SMK, Gangsta Pat, Little Pat, Skinny Pimp 211, we was working all working on Al Capone's album. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. At a studio called The Warehouse. So I'm like embedded in Memphis hip hop music because I was a DJ before that. They used to call me DJ C Love and I did a lot of proms and, and parties throughout the city. Um, mm -hmm. One of the number one DJs, Devin Steele, his little brother used to record at my house. Um, so we we we're embedded in that. Um, that that and it's like a tight well. music community there. Like the the music culture is yeah. really tight. It's tighter now due to the younger cast, but back in the days, a lot of the the old heads had you know the we inherited our um, forefathers uh inabilities to work together like you never uh, seen Isaac Hayes and Al Green doing projects together right. you know what I mean mm -hmm. um so when it came to 
you know, beef between DJ Paul and DJ Squeaky and all of that. You know what I mean? We mm-hmm. kind of inherited that type of atmosphere. Gotcha. So real competitive. But it got better later. Yeah, yeah. The the three six yo got it beats and all of that mess. And I'm and I'm glad to see that man because honestly I'm from Tupelo, Mississippi, and I grew up listening to all those cats like Yo right. Gotti three six. Like that's what I was. That's right. I was raised on all that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, play it yeah, fly. You know, yeah. Like mm-hmm. it's, it's it's crazy. It, it did used to be crazy back in the day when it was on the music oh, scene yeah. with, with all that. Bro, you know? it was it was so crazy to where no studio would let them cats in there. So when I came, when I got successful on the scene, is one particular studio artist artist did they had an incident at artist where you know guns were drawn and all of that, and because I was kind of clean cut, you know. Uh, it was the time when they wouldn't let nobody come in the studio on the side of the book. I remember <laughs> we was working wow. with on uh, Yo Gotti's Back to the Basic record, and they, cause they couldn't book a studio because it was just mm. so gangster, the atmosphere. And, and I would have to book a studio in order to get a lot of cats in there. Well, yeah, man, Memphis is Memphis is rough, man. Like Memphis, like like for real. We was just talking about like like Grand Rapids and stuff, but Memphis is one of those hubs where like, man, you can be in the yeah. wrong place. You know, mm. it's it's crazy. So that's in a I'm nice glad neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it goes down in a nice neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, so a good so like your your journey your journey coming out of there. Um, how how did you start to like break out? you know, and, and start to get your music heard in different areas. And, and especially how did you get it to New York, which at that time and, and, you know, kind of early to mid nineties was, was just kind of like a, a Mecca for hip hop music. Yeah. Great, great question. Um, I've always been a, a fan of hip hop. So like I was saying earlier, we, we got, we, we got it early with the, mm-hmm. with the machines and the music and all of that, you know, I'm, I'm 49. So I grew up with hip hop. It's, it's, mm-hmm. you know, I consider myself an intricate part of it. Um, so coming coming from Memphis, uh, being from a musical family, you know, I, I always knew music and music was all around me. But um, the DJing aspect taught me about the beat making aspect, the timing. And, and I got my first drum machine and was making Paul's button tapes and tapes with my mixer sampler, mm-hmm. you know, getting it. And I always just, Rob my mom and pop's record collection and take uh, you know it got i was going, out of, going around everybody in the family with records just stealing their records you know even for my aunts and uncles all that right so i always kind of knew certain certain music but um to fast forward a little bit i first got a taste of the industry through uh I sent out some tapes. My first first taste of it, I, I sent tapes out to to you notice. I said tapes, tapes yeah, to tapes. Uh, cassettes. Rock, like, um, was it that tapes or cassettes? <laughs> nah, it was cassette. Okay. <laughs> I sent cassettes to uh, Pete Rock's brother just randomly because I was just like being a fan of hip hop and Premier and Pete are my favorite producers. So I sent. I, I noticed he had formed a Soul Brother Number One company, so I sent a tape to it. And I got a call back from his brother, his brother Ruddy. Uh, he passed away, rest in peace, Ruddy Phillips. And uh, Ruddy called me back. And he was like, yo, you got some dope dope joints. Now I'm going to let Pete hear it, right? So he, he he let Pete hear it. And from what I understand, Pete was like, yo, let's sign him. So like in 94, I was signed to uh, Soul Brother Number 1 production company. Wow. So, so oh, wow. And, fr- and from that... Um, you know, I uh, was sending beats off for of Nas's first record and AZ's first record in that same batch. Like his brother mm-hmm. really, really um, was was supporting me. Um, he um, at the same time, my best friend, whom I call my brother uh, John Bass, got drafted. He's from Jersey, right? Mm-hmm. And um, he got drafted, and I got a chance to go to summer camp in Jersey. Right, mm-hmm. he was in Secaucus, New Jersey, which was right across the bridge. So Pete brother would come and pick me up. So I got a chance to go in the basement and watch Pete make beats. Like uh, some of the beats was on the main ingredient that I actually watched him make. Wow. Um, and I just sat there for hours and hours just watching him make beats. And that, that was a life changing experience right there. And this was like 94. 94, okay, um, so you were what, probably, was that 17 or? 
might have been 19, 1920. 1920, maybe. okay. Yeah, so that, man, that's huge, bro. So, you, so you're basically traveling hundreds of miles, coming up north and working with somebody who – and that, that's early in Pete's career, right? Like he wasn't even – legendary he status hot. yeah he was he was hot he was just kind of coming out from like heavy d and like you know it was his big cousin i believe well now um, he had re- they, they had release mecca and the soul brother so he was on fire he's getting oh, like 15, so this is after 15 mecca. to okay. 20 a joint yeah this is that was mecca oh wow brother. that was my Doing first tape that of, i bought uh, actually main oh that's crazy wow. yeah yeah mecca and the soul brother was the first first tape that i actually bought so man, yeah, that was that was crazy. They were they were on fire at that point. That makes a lot of sense. Bro, I took a Greyhound bus up there. Oh, no, <laughs> not the gray, not the Greyhound, bro. Man, the Greyhound, that's that's rough. <laughs> I can imagine, bro. Bro, the Greyhound is the great. I'm telling you, man. I took many Greyhounds. The Greyhound is not the way to go. <laughs> bro, and the bus imagine? stations in Jersey, wild, bro. That's <laughs> listen, Newark. It 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 it's, yeah. it stopped in Newark. So can you imagine coming from Memphis, Tennessee, to Newark, New Jersey? All oh, the Greyhound. Man. Shell that's, shock. Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's that's culture <laughs> shock for real. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, oh my god, this is wild. But it was the greatest greatest experience. One of my one of one of my best experiences in, in the business. That's man. dope. That's yeah, dope. That had so, to be so exciting. How, yeah, man. Yes, and, and working sir. with you know with a legend like Pete. So how how did that situation? Um, how did it transpire? How long were you working? You know, with Pete's production company. Well, I didn't really get to work with him because he was so busy. Like I said, that one time in the basement, you know changed mm-hmm. my life. I got to see him do what he did on the SP. Um, I remember I first walked in there and the first thing he said to me was, yo, you scratch like Premier. And I was just <laughs> a, a, excited for that. You know what I mean? But And mm-hmm. I just sat down and watched him make, make you know, make the joints. And um, after that, it, it, really, it, it didn't manifest into nothing, but that was good enough for me. I got to meet one of my idols. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And sit down and watch work. I, we never said two words back and forth. You know what I mean? I just sat there and watched him do his thing. Yeah, and sometimes um, that's enough. That inspiration, you know. Like yeah, uh, as a young producer, yeah. I, I remember same thing. The first time I saw somebody making beats, it was you know he was doing it in his living room, and I think he had like it was just a. It might have been it might have been like an EPS plus or something, and. Mm. I had never seen anything like it. And, you know, he just, he just had everything set up in his living room, a couple of racks right. on the table, like rack mounts on the table. And I just, I just sat there for like an hour. I didn't want to leave. Like my friends were like, all right, come on, let's go. I'm like, do I have to? <laughs> so I know that feeling, man, where it's like, you're just soaking up game and just being inspired by, by the whole, the, the, the whole experience and just seeing how, how somebody who's kind of ahead of you in experience, you know, does their thing. So what what did you do after that experience of kind of like taking in what Pete was doing? Um, did you send out were you sending out more demos? Did you stay up north or were you kind of going back and forth? I um came back home, fixed my child to start like that. I yeah, came back home um excited, you know, to make make more more beats. Um mm-hmm. from the little tricks I, I, I watched him do. And um then I, I pretty much was, was recording, and um, I got a wild idea from my wife, you know, since that didn't really manifest the way that I wanted it to. It was a great experience, but, you know, you want to get some placements. So she was mm-hmm. telling me, hey, why don't you just pick five record companies and send some tapes to? Mm. You know, and at that time, record companies, you send them some, some material, they send you a letter back. Like, we don't accept unsolicited material. Unsolicited. Yeah, yeah. So... <laughs> I got, I got, um, I sent out like six tapes and five letters I got at for the unsolicited material. And I got one mm-hmm. phone call from Harv Pierre because uh, I sent it to the bad boy. Mm-hmm. And he was like, uh, I'm going to put you on with my man, uh, June. And June put me on. He was like, yo, I want you to meet uh, Nasheen. Mm-hmm. And from there, Nasheen called me like, yo, you got some joints. I want to do some work with you. I'm like, okay, bet. He was like, um, and just, just to give you guys some background, uh, Har Pierre is is kind of like what Diddy's that? right hand man, right? Yeah, he was the president president of uh, Bad Boy. Yep, and Bad um, Boy Records. And we're talking about Nashim Nashim Myrick. That's how you pronounce his Nashim last name. Nashim Myrick was my yep. production partner. Yeah, became he was at first my manager, and then we became production partners. Yeah, Nashim Myrick. Awesome, and and I know for for those those of you who are uh, familiar. Um, I first heard of Nasheem from, and probably both of you from the T O N Y, 
Yeah. Uh, B, which was yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember yeah. Capone and Noriega. They 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 dropped a single, and I remember saying that I think it was like a sticker. You remember back in the uh-huh. day, they used to have the sticker of the producer, like they would put it on after the the package was shrink wrapped, and I was like. Yeah. Call the six live Brody. I was like, let me see what this is about. And that's when, like, you know, you and Nasheem kind of popped on my radar because I I was still in a study phase. This is like maybe like uh, ninety seven, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I think I had just got my my MPC. I was seventeen, uh, and I was just buying everything that came in the record store. And yeah. you kept popping up on these on these twelve inches. 12 you know inches, what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah twelve inches. That's crazy. Yeah. So. Uh, so basically, with Nashim, he was he working with? Um, he was already working with Diddy, and had they, you know, had you guys kind of formed the Hitman yet, or was it just, you nah, know, getting the started? Hitman button, they was just getting started. Nashim, I first saw his name on uh, Mary's My Life album. I think uh, mm-hmm. that's where the Who Shot You beat first showed up. Okay, with Keith Murray on it, like it's like a, a interlude or intro type record, right? Mm-hmm. Um, from my understanding, that was Nasheem's first beat. So when Biggie did it, it was just it just was crazy. Mm-hmm. So he was buzzing from the Who Shot You. Um yeah. and then um when we hooked up uh the first record, what was crazy is from that tape selection, the second one or the first one, I can't remember which one, the Queen Bitch record came from that tape selection. So Nasheem's second mm. phone call to me was, you got to come to New York. And I'm like, what for? He's like, Biggie want one of your beats. Matter of fact, he said, Biggie want two of your beats. So I'm like, that. He's like, I'm going to up the ticket. So right. my second trip to New York, I'm flying in, fresh off the plane, going straight to Unique Studio from the airport to Unique. Are you yeah. carrying the SP twelve hundred? Did you just bring the floppies? <laughs> yeah, I brought. Well, I I, I brought my twelve hundred and I had my floppies too, because mm-hmm. I didn't know, you know, if they had a. But he, you know, back here you could rent anything, so I had. Yeah. I was ready, so I'm I'm walking in the studio in the unique and Biggie sitting on the couch and I'm thinking in my head, damn, this notorious Big, and <laughs> I'm about to drop this beat. So, you know, Biggie, he's sitting back and he's like, yo, you from Memphis, right? I'm like, yeah. He's like, I'm coming to Memphis next week. Take my pager number down. So I take the pager number too, down. Man. That's crazy. I dropped the beat and he like, yo, you got some shit. You know what I mean? He's like, yo, we're going to do some work. So I dropped the beat, bounced out, right? And uh, I think I stayed in New York about a week, man. I was just work, did some paperwork and all of that. Mm-hmm. And come back to the crib sure enough i get a phone call on my answer machine and biggie like yo i'm in memphis come to the hotel come to the show you know i got you blah 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 but what was crazy when i called the number back his pager number because i called it like i want to know if this is really his pager number he just you know, he, he right, ghosted right. me or something <laughs> i call a joint back and um he got the he got the queen bitch record on his answer machine with him rapping to it. Oh, <laughs> so I'm, I'm like, oh man, this is. And that crazy, was the thing man. back in the day, right? Like, like to have yeah. have fresh tracks on your answering machine when people call. Answer machine, hell, <laughs> hell yeah, that's that's how they knew you. You know what I mean? Because I used that's, to call, that's how they knew it was you. Yeah, dude, Listen, that's, that's I used to crazy. Call, I used to call Pete's number so much because he used to put new beats on his joint. I know he got sick of me calling his number, but he used to have new beats on his joint like every week. That yo, that's you know it's, it's, it's crazy how full circle that is. Because I remember I was rapping back then, and um, I took an interlude beat that Pete did, and I looped it up, mm. and I spit to that on my answering machine. Like I did like a little sixteen, you know what I mean? Leave me a message was like the last line, and it was just <laughs> it was just a fly, you know, it was just like a fly part of the culture. Like your your answering machine was like. It was like kind of like your calling card. Like when people called you, you had to yeah. have something fly on your answering machine. You either had to say something fly, something slick, especially if it was a chick calling, right? Like, you know, it's she can brand probably, yeah, building, like right? Dude. It's like yeah, yeah. it was. Yeah. See, all, all this is before my time, man. Back in the nineties, man, I was a little <laughs> snot nosed kid, man. I was still, you know, I was listening to music because, like, like I've always loved music coming up. So, like, you know, what I'm saying, like, some of the songs right. that you produced, I remember, like, being in the house like this, little snot nosed kid just dancing, <laughs> you know, what I'm saying, or vibing out to, like, you know, Biggie and Lil Kim and stuff. But you know, I wasn't like all up on 
like the 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 inner workings like who produced it and all that stuff man but it's like it's crazy to like you know like see you and then be like yo man i remember that joint bro that i used to be in there little snot nose kid get it you know (laughs) like that only that only you track bro that was like one of my my things man that was yeah we we that's crazy you said that right because that yeah. track almost didn't happen um the only you track we had um so so to go back we did the queen bitch record right so my third mm-hmm. trip to new york first placement was queen <laughs> bitch I and that, that was like little kim's first major single right that was, uh, yeah yeah that was one uh i think no it, it was either between that and no time it's hard for me to mm-hmm. remember oh I yeah, think, yeah that's right yeah. i think queen bitch hit the underground first like the mixtapes right. and shit you know what i mean mm-hmm. um so when i um i get off the plane for my third trip i'm hearing everybody playing the instrumental Mm-hmm. Queen bitch instrumental, so that just blew my mind. Like, yo, this is crazy. Like, New York was was crazy then. So, yeah, the third trip is when we, um, because I came back up there. I did the the I did the Tony beat, the top of New York beat. I did the foundation at the crib. Sent it to Nas. She was like, yeah, let's let's work on it. So mm-hmm. I come back up. He had already had the meeting with Tragedy and and Martin Moore about calling the Noriega. <laughs> Right, so mm-hmm. when that joint jumped off, I remember he played it for um, Puffy, and Puff didn't like it. Right, I think it was just you know he wasn't in that element then. Yeah, and mm-hmm. uh, when when he played it for Puff, Puff was like, "Yeah, it's cool." Right, so I remember we ended up recording it at Daddy's house, and we mixed it at Daddy's house. So after mm-hmm. we got it right and was getting ready, we was mixing the record. And it, we was putting the strings and all of that in there, right? right? And I remember Puff coming in the room, and he looked around like, said some slick like, "Yeah, y'all giving away these homeboy rates." You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, that's how, like I would have gave y'all more money for these joints, you know? Had I known right. it out like this, you know what I mean? But mm-hmm. uh, it was kind of cool. But but after that, that's when I started hearing about the hitman being formed. So. I remember one time Nash called me like, yo, we about to take a trip to, uh, to Trinidad. And Puff said, I could bring you. Because cause really, Nash was managing me, but we was doing production together. So they right. saw me as Nash's partner, right? So mm-hmm. um, we get to Trinidad, and um, that's when everything started to formulate, you know, the hit and all of that. So mm-hmm. on the Trinidad trip, it was myself and Nash, and we were also paired up. It was me and Nasheen, Derek and Ron, mm-hmm. Vida Angeletti and, and Amin Ra. They always been right. together. And then Puff and Stevie. So on that particular trip, Faith was on the trip. Aaliyah was out there. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Horace Brown. Horace Brown was out there and 112 mm-hmm. was out there. Then he had um, engineer Axel Neil House and um, Tony Maserati and uh, Doug, Doug. Legendary uh, engineer Doug? Tony Maserati. Yeah. My man Doug. Wow. Um, so um, we were all just out there, just just mobbing on the beats, you know. And that's when um, Puff first approached me about signing to the Hidden. Mm-hmm. So the the funny thing is, you know, I don't know if y'all know, but I am considered by some a Hitman, and I'm considered by some not a Hitman, right? Because I never signed to Bad Boy Productions or to Puffy as an actual oh. producer. But you were just always never, with the fam, always putting in work. At the heat, bro. He, he, yeah. he, his words to me was, I don't care what you do, as long as you keep bringing me that heat, hey, you know what I mean? <laughs> you're hit me. You, you're hit me. You might not be on paper, but you definitely hit me. You know now, what I mean? So, quick question. Now, hmm. by you not signing, was that because you had some type of savvy at that, you know what I'm saying, as far as legal-wise? Because a, a hmm. lot of people were you know a lot of people talked about puff's uh contract practices back then that they were they were pretty they were they were just they were different <laughs> so was that, it was it something know, where you just didn't want to uh commit to to something that that deep i tell you at that time i was being loyal to Nashin, my partner mm-hmm. that was one of the reasons i didn't sign because he offered me a publishing deal as well Okay. Um, and and I'm savvy with contracts as well, right? Mm-hmm. Um, 
wasn't a bad situation. I just was gonna, you know, was was gonna ride out what I started with. That's how yeah. I am. You know what I mean? Um, I noticed a lot, a lot of y'all brothers from Memphis. Y'all be on point with the with the contract and the music talk. Like people ain't gonna sign y'all to no BS. I mean, you know, I hear Yo Gotti nah. talking like that. I hear Dolph talking like. There's something in the culture yeah. there, and something in the water in Memphis where y'all y'all just don't sign everything. Yeah, me. A lot of them got me to think. Because, <laughs> yeah, serious, serious. Um, like my, I was, like, I'm an advocate for you knowing how to read a contract, and knowing about mm -hmm. your publishing and all of that. Like I wouldn't work with certain artists if I couldn't teach you about that or if we didn't have that conversation. Because that's, yeah. that's how you get your money. Yeah. You need to know how to get your money. Um, and, and as and a producer, be, that that would be a concern if you worked with an artist and then they just took your records to anybody, oh yeah. signed anything, and then you you would probably miss out on on money that you would do as well. Listen, I got a story. Can't nobody hold me down. I produce that. My name, I, I carry that cassette with me every every day, right? Um, mm -hmm. The actual cassette. We're talking that about Mace here. Mace and Puff, Puff's first okay. single as an artist. This is okay. after okay. Uh, Biggie passed, right? Um, gotcha. Can't nobody hold me down. Was his first single as a that was his debut single as an artist. That was a. And, that was uh, a he that debuted was a... Mace. Go ahead. go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Oh no, nah, you good? Uh, yeah, no, nah, yeah. I was. I was just. I was. I was just like. I was putting together the song. You said the song, and then like every time you say that, like I'm, I'm hearing the song in my head, bro. So. <laughs> You yeah. should throw the sound bite. We shouldn't get flagged. Throw the sound bite in there. I, I, I argue with YouTube about my records all the time. Like, this is my record. Like, this is my own part of this record. Yeah. But what was crazy about that record, to go to what you said, it was crazy back then because when you release a record, if, if you're somebody like Puff, he can go straight to Flex or Clue or whoever, and they're going to play that joint. Mm -hmm. So before the record... Like, I remember that record stayed on the mixing board for, like, 14 days, 10, 10 days or 14 days. And when it was finally done, he took it to the radio station, and it blew up from there. Mm -hmm. Well, the problem with that was the record, the sample wasn't clear, the two samples, the little, the Calypso record and the um the message. They, they hadn't cleared the sample. Mm -hmm. So when it's time to get paid and do the negotiations for that record, the only money I saw was on the sale because the two samples took all of the publishing. Mm. They took the publishing and the rights, you know what wow. I mean? So mm -hmm. that was a hell of a lesson to have a, you know, a, a number two record platinum single. And, yeah. and, and you know what I mean? But at the time, singles were selling, so it's all on, the, on, the, on the single and the album, so I still got money off of it, but to, to have that publishing and a writer's check would have been crazy as well. You see what I'm saying? And that's, that's very interesting because uh, one of the questions um, and, and kind of one of the topics that come up in the producer community a lot is, you know, should I use samples? Should I not use samples? Do I have to worry if I use samples? And I think that story kind of illustrates kind of the worst case scenario, which is if you it's not necessarily you get in trouble. It's if the song takes off, you just don't get right. you just don't get much. Well, some of them, some of them, you know, because I, I I do my own sample claims sometimes. Some of them, you you know, you can get their information from being my ass gather. You can call them, and a lot of them are cool because the records mm -hmm. are so old. They wasn't making money off of them, so right. you can offer them, you know, a couple of grand and 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 a, and a piece of the publishing and the writers, and you keep it moving, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, nowadays it's so easy. You got uh, what what uh, Tom Silverman, his track deal company. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. They doing some some great things. Um, so it's a it's a lot of ways where you can still get your sampling on and not have to worry about that. And I I never because sampling is so fun to me. I never worry about clearing a sample until it is to that time. You know what I yeah. mean? Um, even if you know I might get in trouble and and release a record. You know when it's time. That's when it's time. So that's mm -hmm. when I'm doing it. Yeah. So you, so you, yeah, I, I ain't trying to steal from the Robin. I'm gonna definitely give it up because I always make sure I list it or write it down so I'll know. But when it's time for them to get paid, we're gonna make sure they get paid. Right. Okay. So you you just worry about making the music first and then worry about all this oh, all yeah. that stuff later. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because the music definitely. is where it's at anyway. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. sitting there trying to make the music worried about if you're gonna clear the sample, then you know that's no fun. Gonna, yeah. <laughs> You sitting no there stressing about clearing samples while you making the beat. Man, <laughs> Just look, make the listen, beat. 
we can make a it's so crazy man we're so lucky so blessed right because we can make a living making beats something we love to do digging in crates making beats then sending them out or youtube and, or releasing them you know what i mean like mm -hmm. that's such a such a uh 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 incredible thing to be a part of yeah man Absolutely. not have to you know you you doing what you love to do making videos making beats that's crazy to me yeah man it's, it's definitely, it's, it's kind of like a golden age for producers in a lot of ways. I mean, obviously, yeah. the era you came up in is a golden age, for, you know, as far <laughs> as accolades, plaques, the checks, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, right, right. But yeah. as far as now, it's, it's it's a golden age in the sense of the, the creative freedom you have. And, the, you know, you don't have the, I guess it's a double-edged sword, right? Because you don't have gatekeepers now as much. But then you don't have guys like Puff who are great gatekeepers in a way because... Right. When they give you the thumbs up, man, they taking you to the moon with them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's next level. It's next mm -hmm. level, man. I, I learned how to, um, I always had my style of doing things, but I learned how to make records from Puff and, and I seen and, and being around those guys, you know, watching Stevie J put bridges in and, and take a, mm -hmm. a raw beat idea and bring it to life. Right. Um, Bad Boy was my university. You know what I mean? Um, right. Being around all them guys. So it was a real dope experience. D-Dot got one of the illest record collections to me. Um, just just like the, the, the Benjamins and, and Do You Know, like them samples mm -hmm. that came from, from his collection. You know what I'm saying? He was just starting to make beats when yeah. we was in Trinidad. You know what I mean? So, And you know, you it, know what's it, interesting? Back then, you know, I, I was... I mean, you can see, I, you know, I rocked the camo. I always had the Tims. I was one of those, you know, I don't want right. to say a backpacker, <laughs> but I was one of those rugged hip hop dudes. <laughs> but I yeah. could always, and, and you know, the the the, the producers like the hitmen, you know, the the guys who would do these these shiny, you know, shiny records, right? But they still right. had great sample work, great drums, great bass yes. lines. It was just like these little sprinkles, embellishments of, you know. And you know, what I mean, just little we, stuff that made it a little softer or kind of soften the edges, and that's what made it a hit. I mean, but these are just genuine hard hip hop beats with a little sprinkling of something to make it hit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bro, we were hip hop heads. Uh, me, Derek, Ron, Nasheen, the shit Puff is a hip hop head. He's right in the mix of it. You know what I mean? Right. Um, he just found his niche in in, in polishing records. Mm -hmm. But yeah. man, yeah, he definitely is, is one of them cats. But that's really that was the thing. If you look at the Life After Death album, it was it's like a Bible to cats on how to make a great album. Yeah, because they had some of everything on it. You know what I mean? Absolutely. But, and but, and you but you he, how, what kind of got you into you know uh, kind of you know doing the one twelve stuff, doing the Mary J. Blige stuff. Kind of what made you get into that transition of doing R and B? Was it just that that culture you were in, you know, around those guys who knew how to polish records? Is is that kind of what the only difference was, or, or were you trying yeah, to do the, something new? The one twelve joint was was. Um, I remember when we was coming out of because uh, because uh, Stevie did the beat in Trinidad, and uh, they wrote the record. Well, now he did it before Trinidad. But the record was hot when we was in Trinidad. So when we got back, Puff was going to do a remix. Mm -hmm. And nobody wanted to do the remix. Because, you know, if you think about 96, 95, 96, the, hip, the, 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 the BPMs was different then. They had yeah. a certain bop, right? Mm -hmm. You're talking mm -hmm. like Queen, Queen of Bitch Top of New York. It was a certain bop with them records. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, so... Everybody was like, the, you know, the tempo was fast. And I remember passing him in the hallway. He was like, yo, let's just go in the midi room and try something. And, and he said to me, he said, and I don't know if he remembers this, but I do. He said, I don't care if you sample Bounce Rock Skate. Just try something, right? Wow. <laughs> I said, okay, bet. This is good. Now, this is how, how crazy it is. I go in the midi room, and the first record I see sitting beside the turntable was Bounce Rock Skate. Uh, <laughs> so you think that was a setup or that was just divine intervention? Could have been a setup. <laughs> I, I I don't even care because the first thing I did was pick up my SP 1200 and I chopped up Bounce Rock Skate. 
So the only wow. new remix is is a, a top like what ended up happening from my chop. Stevie J played the bass line over and added mm-hmm. the rest of the sprinkles, but it, it's bounce rock skate just chopped wow. up and, and he played it exactly like I top. So that bass line is bounce rock skate. Wow. And that's, that's how the that's only crazy. new remix came about. And he came in the room like, yo, that's it. <laughs> Go <print> it. <laughs> and, and and that was that joint. But now, um, now, real quick, I, I don't want to cut you hmm. off, but what you were talking about, good? Stevie replaying it, um, that that that's actually a huge skill as a producer is kind of like being able to take a sample and then replay certain elements if you have to, right? Like, is that something that yeah. that Puff him brought guys and, on to do? Well, you know, him and Chucky Booker played both. Of, I mean, Chucky, I'm sorry, Chucky Thompson played every instrument, right? And Chuck, Chucky mean, just yeah. recently passed away, right? Yeah, Chucky passed away, man. Rest, Rest in peace, peace to Chucky. Chucky. He's a legend. I didn't know much about him, but, I, you know, the, the community really loved that guy. So, shout out to Chucky. Oh, yeah. I'm going to um, stand up for a little bit. I got Chucky better, yo. So, it's all good. Um, Chucky and Stevie played all of the records, man. Um, both of them were great producers. And they both could play multiple instruments. Mm-hmm. So, we would definitely... Uh, capitalize on that but yeah that's one of the elements that puff he would do bring bring them cats in and add his production and they add their style you know and it became a full flex team production on, on a lot of the records damn wow that's I'm, <laughs> that's crazy, crazy. Right? yeah it is yeah. man like i said i i wish i could have been because like i still love like the um i still like the live instrumentation like part of music still you know what i'm saying too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so I, like it would have been it would have just been dope just to be back there. Just like, you know, I'm trying to put myself in the session. Like I wish I could like see stuff through your eyes and like how it was back then, because I'm I, you know, there's a lot of nostalgia there. You know, yeah, what I'm and, saying? And, and I just the thing off off top that really stood out to me was when they heard your cassette, it was they flew you out. Whereas now as if somebody hears something you like, they like, you know, just send me the stems. Just, just send me the yeah, just send me the stems, the yeah, email. That's what I like, like, yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah, I like that, right? Because because listen, in, in my era, it it behooves you to be a part of the studio session. Not only could you learn something, but that's how you network and that's how you did things. So you know, we didn't have that tech that technology then. So everybody was in the session. You actually mm-hmm. physically track your beat out from your drum machine, right? Right. From your SP plug, if you see whatever you use, you you actually track it out, and you're sitting mm-hmm. in there. You know, I sat in, in in a lot of sessions with, with a lot of the artists. Um, but I, I wanted to say this on a Mary J record. The Mary J record, the reason I'm credited is, is because right record, but he sampled Queen Bitch. So that's why I'm on there as a writer, because mm-hmm. Queen Bitch, Bitch was my record, you know, writer and pop. Okay. Um, at, at first, I wasn't happy about it. Really? Uh, because yeah, coming being a hardcore hip hop producer, beat maker, you know, I'm a beat maker. It was so new, the record was so new that it's like, damn, you know, my record ain't through living yet. You oh, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And he comes back then. We called them them mm-hmm. jacks. So it was like Rodney jacked the record and made an R&B record out of. You know, that was the thing: jacking hip hop records and making R&B records out right. of. Right. Which which led to to the uh India R E record. You know, hmm. I'm taking a page out of that book, Jack the Akinelli record for India R E. Okay. And that that was you know the, I mean? the, the, um, the India R E record you were directly responsible for. That wasn't somebody sampling you. Yeah. No, nah, no, nah, that was me. Uh I did uh the her single her first single video, I did that and uh I see God in you. And it's funny because if you were a hip hop head at that time, and India R E is like this wholesome artist yeah. right she's and singing yeah. about loving right. yourself and and, yeah, and if I you mean, know yeah. that Ocknell record oh my god it's like exactly. yo who took put it in your mouth and made it wholesome <laughs> me? <laughs> yo me? if yeah. your kids aren't around and you're, you're you know what i'm saying you're not familiar with Ocknell's, uh you know record look up put it in your mouth not around your kids and don't do it at work yeah. Listen, <laughs> but that I don't know that record was crazy I don't know who put. I, I can't think of his name. He's gonna kill me. Who produced the Akinelli record? But I just was it Dr. The period. He, was it Dr. It, it might have been Dr. Because I, I think I don't know. I, I could be wrong. 
I'll look it the up. The way he put that joint together, I knew the sample, but the way he put it together was crazy. But, and it's mm-hmm. crazy how how when me and her hooked up, um, I had to drive to Nashville to listen to her demo because they wouldn't send it to me. Mm-hmm. And uh, my friend Ring Nally, she was like, you got to come hit this. So I'm from Memphis. It's like two and a half hours. So I drove up. And she was working at Universal at the time, and she played me like three records. And I see God, and he was one of the first records, but it didn't sound like that. And um, mm. she was like, so what you want to do? And I was like, well, let me try that record, right? It's, it's crazy, right? So I um, said, send me the, uh, the acapella that I see God in you. Let me get that. Mm-hmm. And on my drive home, I was listening to Red Man Muddy Waters album. Mm-hmm. And Red Man got a joint on there. That I jack for I see God in you, mm. and I can't think of the record. But when you go back and listen to Muddy Waters, you're gonna hear and be like, "Oh wow!" <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I got home and I, and, and 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 I did that and went back to Nashville, played it for India, and she loved it. And she said to me, "You need to do video," mm. and I was like, "That." So I, when I get back to the crib, she was in Atlanta with Mark Bachelor making the rest of the album, and she called me, and um. She was like, uh, at the time, we was just talking on the phone, and I was going through beats on the drum machine on my MPC. And mm-hmm. I had the skeleton of the of the Aconelli Jack, and I made a mistake and hit the play button. And I started talking. She said, hold up, what's that? And I was like, you heard that? She was like, yeah, I heard that. Play it. And I played it, and she started singing the hook, the video. She mm-hmm. was like, that's it. You got to come back to Nashville. So I had to go back to Nashville. <laughs> and we ended up making a record, me, her, and Shannon Sanders, and that's how the video man. came about. That's wow. so dope, man. Like I said, like I said, that's the one thing about like the new age, like that. I because you know I I feel like I make my best work when I'm around the people. Like mm. I try to get I yes. like you 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 don't even know how hard it is sometimes. Like when you're trying to get like people that you're trying to work with, they they come in the studio nowadays. It's like it's almost like pulling mm. teeth, man. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's like yeah. send me, send me the track, send me this, send me the stems. Or, you know what I'm saying? I said, and I'm like, man, I always like that's that's just dope. Like you, you went to Nashville, you work with her, mm-hmm. then you was on your way out, you send her some stuff. She's like, yo, you got to come back. So you went back, and y'all was like, it's a it's mm-hmm. a vibe, man. I I yeah. I wish that part of music is what I want like music to get back to. I hope that music can get yeah. back to in some way like more personal, like mm-hmm. that way, you know. Yeah, I, I think I think it's coming back because you know I see a lot of the young guys collaborating, right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and that's the way you get to bounce ideas and vibe and show off your producer chops, right? You end up with the artists or your collaborators, and y'all get to just vibe together and create the best record. That's where I come from. That was so special about the uh, Hitman is mm-hmm. you, it, yeah, it's, it's it's the six of us. You know, it grew into more, but the core six. We had a little friendly competition going on, like you right. know, I and, and so many of the great groups of that time. That, that was part of it, right? Like you know, Wu talked about that. Yeah. You know, where you know the producers. Then, then you know, you talking about Rockefeller, where Just Blaze and Kanye were constantly competing, right. and you know, just just yeah. putting people in the room, <laughs> and, and even on a on a MC level, you know, that yeah. that was huge. You know, yeah, like, the artists, like you know, I, I used to, I remember because you know, like obviously, I'm I'm. I'm the snotty nosed kid of the group right now. You know what I'm saying? But like I was listening to like, you know, cash money and that stuff too growing up. And like mm-hmm. Wayne, Wayne, they used to talk about going in this like, I'm gonna slaughter you on this track when I come in here. Like talking mm-hmm. to his boys, you know, they used to yeah. it was always friendly yeah. competition. I wanna murder you on this beat. You know what I'm saying? So you better come with your best verse. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that was a huge component of the culture. So I, I agree. It's it's definitely um it's 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 good when you see people getting back to that and I, it, it probably leads to more cohesive records too right if everybody's in the same environment Definitely. and you know feeling the same vibe so that's really dope i want to shift gears real quick um let's just uh talk to the chat because i want to shout out everybody who's who stopped in today who's who's uh in the chat shout out to big will beats appreciate you stopping big in will bro good. and uh big will's a, a huge big part will of this community too man Always, yeah, bro. Always, always showing love. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Shout out to Big Will. Yes, Appreciate sir. you, man. Always on top of you. I got my mama in the chat, y'all. Hey, what's up, <laughs> oh, Mama Sight? Mary hey, P. Mama, <laughs> mama Pettiford yeah. in the chat. Yes, Shout sir. out to Dunstan Adams. 
said, oh. uh, finally caught a live one and the baby is waking up. Oh, well, replay gang. Hey, man, that's dad beats life for real. <laughs> dad, dad beats, man. Salute, though. Salute happens to, to the all best the of fathers us. out right. there, man. Or and uh, Carlos, you, you have kids. Alive. Yeah, 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 absolutely. You, 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 your kids older. Huh? How many kids you have? I got two kids, son and daughter. My daughter just turned thirty-four and seven, and my son is twenty twenty-four. And I you got said thirty-four and twenty-four. Thirty-four. Yeah, so, oh yeah. I got, so yeah, we were talking about that. You got you got the hard five, work out of the way. Nine and twelve. Wow, man. Yeah, so you had, got, she just had a newborn, too. I got a new one. Congratulations. And yeah. you just moved down to, like, the Austin area to be closer to the to the grandkids, uh, right? Yeah, yeah, San Antonio, Austin area. Yeah. San Antonio, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, That's so dope. you, so you, you were, um, you, were you pretty young when you had your, when you had your kid? How yeah, was that, how was that, 15. like, in, how was that in, like, like, uh, balancing, like, the producer stuff, man? Because, you know. You you've been doing you've been you got all these like accolades and stuff. How was it like trying to balance all that all that stuff? You know, with the kids. I told you that's one. I, I used to do cable with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You was telling me you used to do cable. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, me too. Yeah. I used to be. I used, I used to, to work, work for FedEx. Verizon doing cable. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. FedEx, and, and that's when I was at FedEx. You you had to get a job because hip hop wasn't paying your bills. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, yeah I man. So was that early on or like once? Sessions. Once you once you started getting the the sessions with with uh, you know puffing them and you started getting these placements, I, I take it things change, right? Yeah, I quit the year before I did the um when I was dealing with uh Peach Brother. I, I quit that year. Okay. And That's because cool. I had to get on the bus, you know what I mean. I had to travel, so it, it was some rough times because you know coming back, like I said, that didn't manifest other than the experience, but. Um, the experience was the greatest teacher and, and it was a great experience. So I didn't care if I did make no money off that situation. It was just to be a part, you know, to, to witness that and to see that it was the, it was more than a payday. So from there, mm -hmm. I'm coming back, you know, trying to figure out how I'm going to pay these bills and make these ends meet, you know what I mean? And, and, and that's when, like I said, my wife gave me the idea to send the, send the tapes off to, um, different record companies. Shout Let's out see. to wifey too. Let's clap yeah. it up for wifey. Yeah, shout out. You yeah, know, yeah, 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 it's, it's, it's great to have a great partner in your corner supporting you. Oh, yeah. And um, I like and, to shout out my wife too. She, and she's that's, amazing. And that's just real talk too, man. Because like you know, everybody talks about the love for the music, you know, and like mm -hmm. you know, you got a lot of accolades. You know, you got a lot. Like your, you know, yeah, your track man. record is extensive. But people don't. Yeah. They they still don't understand like what it takes in the journey that it takes to get there. So, you know, a lot of the, sacrifice. The, yeah, the things that you went through and the sacrifice and then like you balancing the the, you know, what I'm saying trying to live your dreams with, you know, the home right. life and your kids, man, that's 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 all a part of it. And I think that's that's a big reason why dad beats exist exists now. It's like to try yep. to help no. people navigate that, you know, what I'm saying, because mm -hmm. yeah. like sitting here, listen here, man, you. You had you went through some stuff, man. You said you was you was doing these records and stuff, but then you was coming back. You was still, you know, doing the grown man, you know, working right. at FedEx, you know, doing your thing. So, you know, yeah. salute to you on that too, man. Man, I appreciate it. Look, I got to get the flowers. The right. <laughs> I was that trip driving down the expressway. Me and my wife went only you when we first heard only you. <laughs> we coming, coming back from the trip and it was coming on the air and I'm like wow you know you had to we you know during our era this was the radio radio with no rap era you know what mm -hmm. I mean they wasn't fond of rap music in my era you know yeah. the radio stations did want to play that so I didn't get to see a lot of the things that, that a lot of the new guys get to see you know um one one of the things I'm not crazy about, you know, being on camera and and I come from the era the producer is is the behind the scenes guy. He's not the front right. guy. I don't come from that. Right. So I don't mind playing the back. You know, you don't hear me, but you might not see me. That's always been my thing. But, yeah, um, yeah, and 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 I think I, and I totally understand that. You know, it's it's definitely <laughs> something that. Um, you know, I mean, I come from that era, too, where I, it took me a little while to break out of it. I mean, people think like I, I've always been on camera and been comfortable, right. you know, with the YouTube channel. And no, it's it's a process for all of us. So, you know, for, for all the producers out there who are worried about being on camera, 
Um, and, mm -hmm. you know, you see guys who are kind of like established on YouTube and established online. It's a process for all of us. It's not it's it's not natural for a producer who for some guys. I mean, you know, there's some guys who, you know, really mm -hmm. enjoy it. But um, yeah. a lot of us have to hype ourselves up and, and until we get to a point where we have a comfort level. Right. Like until yeah. we feel like you know, we, we, until it feels like home, you know what I mean? And so I don't want you guys to feel discouraged as, as far as, um, you know, taking that plunge and, and, and getting in front of the camera because today is such a visual world and, and we, we have to embrace it. And I'm sure you see it, uh, you know, Brody, where there's guys from your generation who are so reluctant to get in front of the camera that they, they kind of just fade it off. You've been blessed enough to yeah. just have great – you know, relationships in the industry where you're still working with the, you know, the Royce, the five nines and um, right. guys who are still current. But, um, right. you know, I'm sure you've seen guys, yeah, you know, of your generation who kind of, yeah. who are super talented, but kind of faded because they they didn't get enough exposure. Right. Yeah. And, and for one, the, the technology changed. Um, you know, it was a, it was a period of time where I, I kind of got rid of my NPCs and went straight for the computer. And didn't like it and had to go back, you know. But yeah. the technology kind of caught up with a lot of guys. And I've always been a type of person. I just love learning new uh, programs. So mm -hmm. I can work everything from FL to Ableton. You know what I mean? Nice. I, That's what's up. I just don't never show. I always make sure I learn it. You know, like I was saying earlier, we was dealing with Pro Tools in 96. Mm -hmm. And it was crashing yeah. a lot. And you was losing a lot of stuff. So we been Oh, it, man. You know, it's just... Oh wow! <laughs> oh man, yeah, I'm you, bro, you just hurt. You just hurt my feelings, bro. I'm telling you, because that's like the. Music and, Pro Tools. and there was so much pressure back then to convert man. the Pro Tools because I, I remember. I mean, I fought yeah. it off, but it, it, it was wasn't. It wasn't to, an easy. It was the industry industry, the industry standard. standard. <laughs> yeah, and you're talking about a solid ten years where it's like if you industry weren't using standard, Pro Tools, yeah. people didn't look at you as professional, and uh, that, that was <laughs> that was a rough time for me because I. I don't. I like to kind of buck the trends sometimes with certain stuff, and like you said, I just didn't really like yeah. the sound of Pro Tools as much as everybody else. Um, right. And, you know, and and some some of it was just going against the grain, but um, yeah, it was, it was definitely a different time, you know. But you but you had you had to you had to get into digital some way, you know. So yeah. I, I did find different dogs mm -hmm. to do that, um, and it sounds like you you know you you kind of embraced um, other tools. So let's talk gear a little bit. Um, you started off. You said okay. with with the with the SP twelve hundred, then you transitioned to the MPC three thousand because Puff well, bought a exactly. bunch of them, right? Okay. No, you started with I, the I MPC started and then you, I started you with got the, the SP. You started with the MPC, okay. Right. So you had a yeah, sixty. Yeah, yeah. I, I had the MPC first. Yeah, I had a sixty two okay. first, right? And with the with the sixty two, I don't know if you ever had one of worked on the sixty had the mono you could do the mono sample right mm -hmm. and you could do your you know put your switch your sample to mono instead of the poly right right mm -hmm. and it, it would repeat but the 62 it didn't have that and that's what mm -hmm. i bought it for mm -hmm. but i didn't oh, know wow. it didn't have that on there so i ended up getting rid of it and and um getting my sp1200 and i remember my man uh rodney chisholm he had a record company and i was working with his artist and he was like, what you want for this album? I'm like, buy me an SB-1200. <laughs> that's a good trade. That's dope. That's a good trade. And, I, and I, yeah. did, I did the, yeah, I did the records on that album. Um, I just seen that album on YouTube, too. It's crazy. But, um, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how I got my 1200. My man bought it for producing the album for him. But, yeah, the, the 62, then the 1200. And then when I seen, um, when the MP3000 came out, we was in Trinidad. And I came back and I got me. Get three thousand, and I've been, you know, three thousand, and then I had the Renaissance um, with the uh, my three thousand with my uh, fifty eighty, my Roland fifty eighty. You know, that was the time. Oh yeah, that's a classic. Yeah, the XV uh, with all of the cards. Right, had my roads in my mood, mm -hmm. um, mm. and then uh, the Renaissance. I had a Renaissance to touch. The the studio, the live one two, uh the I had all of them, the X. So Okay. So, so you went through the whole the modern series, you, you pretty much got all of them. Okay. Yeah. So which, so, yeah, which one is your you were, No, go ahead, go ahead. Oh. I've just I just want to know which one is your baby now. I know you still I know you still probably two. like to work on the, the live two. 
the live two was a beast. Yo, he, yo, he was pre he was preaching about the one just just a few months back. I remember he was like, the one, the one is it. Got on that live too. Yeah, try yeah. try to tell him. But you know what? The one is crazy because of the buttons, right? Mm -hmm. But I don't like headphones. I don't like making beats and headphones. So that right. speaker on the live two is it for me. It's like because you know Man. I can just it's crazy. Like, I, I don't. I told you. I, I'm clumsy because I'll just get up real quick to do something and I'll pull everything off the table. So yeah. that's what. Uh, so the battery. Yeah, the battery is like. I I, I think that um one of the things that I noticed about uh like we we were talking about um well one one point I wanted to go back to real quick. You're talking about bartering okay. your production services for a piece of equipment, and this is something like I tell. Yeah. I tell people in NPC gang all the time, they're like, oh, you know, I'm working with these artists and they just keep saying they don't have no money and they don't want to pay me mm -hmm. uh, or, or, or you're uncomfortable talking about money. That's a hack. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, barter. If you're going to produce oh, yeah. a whole album for an artist or a group, get them to chip in and, and buy you some gear. You know what I mean? It's, it's definitely. Listen, I'll tell you a story. I ain't going to say no names, but. It's a producer, well-known producer that, you know, uh, at one point he was doing a project that I was working on and they wanted him to do a beat. And he was like, yo, you got to, you know, I give you this beat. I don't want no money. Just buy me a new, a new Tahoe. Oh, he was talking that much. Something like that. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Just give me a new Tahoe, man. I don't need no, I don't need no cash. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's what's up. Right. You know, a lot of people don't know the more money you make, the more taxes you pay. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, that's true. The more money you make, the more taxes you pay. And if you can get th this this camera I'm shooting with, my, my wife and her cousin were trying to do a game show, right? It was, uh, it was uh, what's the one? Candy Crush. They, they had a game show a few years Ooh. back. Okay. And my wife and I were just mm. dating at the time. You know what I'm saying? We, we weren't just dating. We were together. But um, she but she wanted her cousin hit her to do this game show. And I had a camera, I had like some older cameras I needed to upgrade. And they were like, can you shoot our demo for us? Like our, uh, you know, our kind of like demo reel to send to the producers. Cause, cause her cousin had a connect with the producers and the show wasn't out yet. Like they were just starting to make it. And I said, all right, yeah, yeah. I'll shoot y'all a demo video. Cause I already know I'm good. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, yo, I'll shoot y'all demo mm -hmm. video. If y'all get on the show and win, it's a long shot, but if y'all get on the show and win the prize, Oh, you, you dropped out a so little was, bit. That was the trade. You dropped Yo, out. they got yeah. on there. They got yeah, you, flown out. Yeah. They won. You know what I mean? It was a long shot. They won. And her cousin didn't mm. hold her end of the bargain. But my wife did. You know what I mean? She was like, all right, I'll get it for you. It took a little. I had to twist the arm a little bit. I was like, yo, y'all did promise me this camera. And now I got the camera. And, you know <laughs> yeah, what I'm saying? We, now now we, I'm doing great things the with prize, it. the prize, though, bro. Yeah. The, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you uh, dropped out. We didn't hear what the prize audio was. dropped a little bit. Yep. 25 when they won. And you dropped um, out again. Did I drop out? Yeah. You know. the <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the the prize was fifty thousand and they split it fifty fifty. Oh, okay. okay. So okay. uh they were supposed to they were supposed to go half on the camera, but it ended up her cousin just kind of took her money and rolled. <laughs> so my <laughs> wife did hold up the end of the bargain. She did buy the camera. It was like mm. three racks. And I've been using it ever since. Yeah. I'll never sell this camera because because it's, okay. it's sentimental value. But I say all that to say oh, wow. those taking if you're gonna yeah. take get something on the line, and that's that's you know that's kind of just all I want to say regarding that situation. There's there's nothing wrong with bartering your services as long as you ju you just not don't want to be working with people with with them not having skin in the game. And, yeah, you know, a lot, kind of, a lot promises. of people get... you, you, You're dropping out, bro. Say it again? No, go ahead. I'll, I'll... Mm. I'll work for promises, but um, it, it's good to hold people accountable for the work that you're doing and, and having some type of agreement. Yo, check check your audio real quick. Yeah, bro, you, 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 you keep... might need to switch All right, I'm, I'm gonna drop uh, out. Come back on your phone, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You know, to, to speak on what he was saying, right? See, yeah. I, I um, I don't never really trip off prices, right? Because 
as a producer, when you find your niche, you're going to be so fast at making beats. The way I, I my, my, um, how I'm comfortable with it is I may make a beat in 15 minutes or 10 minutes or five okay. minutes, right? Yeah, that's pretty and efficient too. If right, if I charge you a thousand dollars, hell, I kind of bounce it off like, listen, I don't, you know, I can look at it I, like I make, you know, so many dollars an hour, thousand dollars an hour. Like if it took me an hour to make a beat and I can make a thousand dollars, then I just made it a thousand dollars an hour, right? So I look at it mm-hmm. that way, a hundred dollars an hour. You know, yeah. I don't really trip off the fact that okay I, I got a name and i gotta charge you know 15 20 grand to do this and that because everybody can't pay that man. yeah we're in a different era where you know the music the royalties is a tenth of a cent you know what i mean yeah on streams it is so it is crazy i was looking at that man. game no more yeah so you guys used crazy. to get paid yeah, you guys used to get paid you're not more. even making a penny yeah i know it's like it, eight cents it's, it's eight crazy cents. So back in the day, you guys used and to I, get paid I, more, right? Like off of like you know yeah, when you yeah, guys the, got publishing and stuff sales. like that. Yeah. Yeah, you you get the you get a percentage off the sales. You get a publishing, a mechanical check. You know what I mean? Then you get your BMI joint. Okay. Your, your writers and your pub. You can get two checks off BMI. Ask that. Well, not ask that. What BMI? I get two checks. A writer, publishing. Then I get a mechanical from the record company and a what they call an artist producer royalty from the record company. So. My thing is, I used to charge like you know three points. Three points is worth basically a quarter. So, mm. off of every unit sold, I get a quarter per unit. You know what I mean? That's crazy. And the units used to sell for like eight nine bucks back in the day. Like the album was eight nine bucks. Some of them was like fifteen. I think wow. Life After Death was yeah. like twenty four dollars or something like yeah, that. Yeah, man. Like I remember that because you couldn't get an album from like from like um I used to buy albums and like CDs for like uh. Well, I ain't used to buy nothing. My mom used to buy them for me when, I, when she could. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it was like it was like ten, fifteen dollars, man. Like yeah. for each for each each CD, man. My mom be like, yeah. "Boy, you only getting one. Which one right. you want? Pick one. Pick one. <laughs> you better pick the one you want, cause you know what I'm saying these these motherfuckers is, is taxing. But <laughs> listen, I remember I remember the game started changing around, but old. Oh, Four oh five when the ringtones when mm-hmm, when, when the ringtones started going crazy yep yeah. them joints is like five dollars and uh, for thirty seconds of a song and a single on iTunes is like ninety nine cents mm-hmm. and I was like oh yeah this is ugly right here you paying five dollars <laughs> for thirty seconds yeah but see like the thing the the great thing about like because like the the game has changed um as far as that but. I think like there's still like more ways because like now you as a producer now you can be mm-hmm. now you're your own because you are you all yeah. you're already your own brand but now you can start like you know capitalizing on the stuff that like you know the artists used to capitalize on like merchandise you know what I'm saying Co- like sharing your knowledge right. you know things like that so like there's still like multiple ways that you can get paid paid you know you just gotta mm-hmm. flip the game over on this head a little bit you know I had a question. Too. This is what I wanted to ask you insight. Um, when, right, y'all can you hear me? Y'all, when y'all do your YouTube intros for your shows, do you register your beats that you play in your intro with BMI or SF as a jingle? I don't know. Right, I'll be back. Give me a second. No, we hear you. We hear can you. you. Hear me? Yeah. But that, okay. that question right. that question was for you, Site, because Site is actually the one who created the intro, the intro music. Okay. Do you did you register did you register the intro music with BMI? Or anything as a jingle for like the podcast? No, no, that's uh, and, and I miss what you guys are wow. talking about. My apologies, but um, no, so we, that's something I should no, register. We yeah, because we were just talking about how the game has changed. Like you know, back in the day, like they got more per, you know, for sales and like you know, mechanical royalties mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And I was mm-hmm. just saying, like, right. even though even though the game is different now, you know, what I'm saying like. The um the producer like can actually capitalize on a lot of stuff that like mm-hmm. the artists like capitalize on now because like you basically creating like your own brand, and then he asked the um the he asked way. the question yeah. he asked the question about like yeah, uh, if so, we go ahead yeah so if you hadn't registered your your intro song to the show, 
I mean, it's a show. You should be able to register it as a as a either intro song or a jingle, and get paid off your own junk. You know what I mean? Like, I think uh, everybody should do that if they can. Mm-hmm. That's dope. like even that. even the yeah even the beat that you're doing on Blue YouTube. Off. Off. That's why my you know what I'm saying. My mic was trash, but um yeah no that that makes a lot of sense <laughs> definitely. No, right? that's game, bro, and that, and that that's that's you know. You know, all of us have things we need to learn. I've been I've been making music probably for 25 years now, and there's still so many areas where, as creators, we miss out on on money making opportunities. You know, um, just just out of not well, well, there's one part not knowing, and then there's also um, it does take work, right? Like you're, you're talking about going in and and doing the registrations and. Um, the different yeah. organizations you have to work with, and it's it's a lot to keep up with. But is is like is part of your routine like staying up on that stuff, like making sure you're getting your publishing and making sure the numbers are right? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Look at it like this, right? Because if, if you do a video and you got a sample in your video, right, you're gonna get flagged. The reason you're getting mm-hmm. flagged because you didn't you didn't you know do a sync fee or you didn't get permission to use it or so on and so forth, so they can't track it. And therefore, they can't get paid off of it. So my ideology was, oh, shit, I can put my own joints on my own YouTube page, right? You create your own way, you register them. So when people clicking on them, it's considered streaming. You're mm-hmm. streaming. So you're making money off of your own joints. You know what I mean? Right. Like, right. It just makes sense to me. It, it's considered a performance. So you're going to get a performance royalty from that stream. You see what I'm saying? That makes sense. So Mm -hmm. I advise everybody to do that or try it, you know, and if they're not allowing people to do it, then they should because they damn sure don't flag you for putting somebody else's music on there and not allowing them to stream on your channel. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So That's a golden nugget, man. Just drop some gold on us. Yeah, that's that's a jewel Mm -hmm. right there, bro. That's a jewel. (laughs) So no, no, I'll definitely be doing that. That makes sense. That makes perfect sense. I think mm-hmm. I was concerned about um, getting a copyright strike from my own stuff, <laughs> but I think I did that. It, it happened to me. It happened. It's to me. happened to you. <laughs> yeah, and, I and, got a I got a joint a joint on my YouTube page where I show partially me making this particular beat, and at, at the end of the I put the beat, the actual beat, on the end of my video, and. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's crazy because I'm on a, I'm on a site called uh, License Lounge, and YouTube sent me an email saying that my beat was already on. Well, this beat that you use is already on this particular avenue or whatever, and they flagged me, and I had to write them back. Like, listen, I made a video of me making that beat on my page. It's my beat, and that's my account on the other site. So what are y'all mm. talking about? Yeah. You know what I mean? That's, like, yeah, it's, it's me. And what's and what's so, your you and what's your YouTube channel too? So we can plug that right now. So it's everybody, just, uh, it, it, it should be uh, Carlos uh, Six July Brody or Carlos Brody. It's, okay, it's my name. And we'll put the uh, we'll put the link Instagram, in the description Twitter. for the replay gang too. Hold up. Yeah, because no, I no. want to check that out too, man. You know what I'm saying? See Absolutely. No, some, he's got some joints on there, and and uh. Nuggets. It, it was uh it was definitely the first time I saw you on YouTube. I think you commented on a video and um mm. I was blown away, man, because you know, like I said, i I, I was one of those guys who was studying the culture so heavy, studying the producers, you know, looking at the at the album credits. Um, not just the album credits, but like I said, the twelve inches, man. It's like when you went wow. to the record store, there were certain things that you was just constantly seeing on the shelves, you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. um you know, it was it was definitely a very very humbling experience. Like you know, having you comment on on some of my videos, and I think that's something uh, for for those of you who are kind of like reluctant about getting into YouTube and getting into social media. Um, the upside is you never know who you're going to run into. You know, and and I've yes. I've had beat streams where you've come on, and you know, you were like, you need less notes in that in that baseline. <laughs> Simple, simplify the baseline. I'm like, yo, yeah. if Brody tell me yeah. to change the baseline, I'm changing the baseline, yeah. and I'm sure enough, it's like it clicked better. Yeah, 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 right. That's crazy. So yeah. it, it's it's one of those things where even if you're not doing it for money, the um, 
just the environment and the community of YouTube and, 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 you know, different social media platforms. But I say YouTube in general, because it's long format, we can have these long conversations on here. Um, right. There's really no replacing that, you know, there's, there's no replacing being able to link up and, and, and speak to, you know, people you admire and respect and, and people who have been such a, a huge influence on you as a creator. And, and it does, you know, it does happen if you put yourself out there, and, you, yes. you know, you kind of just show your best work. So I just want to encourage everybody who's kind of on the fence about it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, don't worry about getting your channel started and and, and learning, yes, you know, because. At, yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're, you know, mm -hmm. I've been talking to talking to Brody about his channel and how we can improve it and things mm -hmm. like that. And people are going to come in into your, you know, into your environment that are going to help you get to that next level. Um, and of course, there's a lot of learning and things like that. But. You, you never yeah. know, you know, what kind of opportunities can come from it. So I just want to encourage everybody, you know, to, to just take the plunge and, and put your work out there, man. And shout out to everybody who, um, you know, yeah. comes comes to this 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 particular stream, but also comes to, to you know, all of our channels and, and show support because it really is mm -hmm. encouragement and, and, it, and it keeps us going. You know, it makes us kind of aware that the things that we're doing and the work that we're doing does have an impact. And sometimes, you know. Brody, we're talking about 20 years later, bro. Like work that you right. did 20 years ago is it was so instrumental to me. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. as an up and coming producer, it's just so amazing that at this point, you know, 20 plus years later in a lot of these cases that we can talk about, you know, that that culture and, and that time period in hip hop. Right. Um, it's just amazing, man. So, you know, I'm, I'm very grateful for that. I never um, imagined that somebody would be sampling my works, right? You, you just <laughs> never imagine that. You know, like yeah. I said, even with the, with the I Can Love You with the Mary joint and then the Remy uh, wake me up early and then um, uh, the 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 uh, Meek Mills, the What's Free, right? You just never yeah. imagine how dollar signs did the only you. You know what I mean? You just never mm -hmm. imagine that. And, I, and um. Me and Nashim actually just did a remake of uh, T.O.N.Y. for this, uh, I can't think of her name, she's going to kill me, she got a Philly though, uh, one of Shaft's artists, but we just did mm. that, it's, it's about to come out, um, it's, it's pretty dope, but it's a remake of T.O.N.Y., and I, I reflip it, uh, you know what I mean, but you wow. just never think That's you're going to be I got, here I can't wait to hear that this joint. long, yeah, it's going to be crazy, um, right. Well, part of that is because you, you, you know, what I'm saying like you, like you said uh, earlier, you know, you're staying up on the new practices, you know, you're, you're keeping great yeah. relationships with people like, you know, networking, network, networking is, is a big part of like this music business and like keeping great relations, relationships and then like knowing what's current and what's, you know what I'm saying? Right. Because like, you don't have to have a YouTube channel, but you know what I'm saying? The fact that you have one just shows that you're, you know, you're adapting to the times and you, you know, because like you said, you come from the era where you don't put yourself on video and stuff like that. You had right. to kind of step out like your comfort zone to like do something that you're not used to doing to, you know what I'm saying? Keep the thing going. But even Man. back in the day, like you had to travel and do stuff like that's mm -hmm. still kind of like out of your comfort zone because you're going to a whole yeah. different state, whole you know, different yeah. area. You know what I'm saying? And that so like it's all about like, you know, sometimes I, I feel like we all get trapped inside of this comfort zone where we're like we're comfortable mm -hmm. in this zone. But in order to actually like stand out and like go to the next level, you have to keep like kind of placing yourself out of your comfort zone and trying new stuff and and just, you know, what I'm saying rocking with with the things that's working because, you know, you stay in your little bubble. That's where you're going to you're going to stay there. You know, so you know, you know. big it's, it's, it's And you see, I mean, I'm sure you've seen right? Premier, you know, Premier's channels. No, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Oh yeah, Premier, Premier's doing it with the with the uh, floppy dish. Yeah. He, he, <laughs> right, he, right, right. That, that's dope. I wish so what's up? Yeah. But Premier, he he always he always said that he wouldn't. I don't think he wants to show people his techniques. I wish he would put the floppy in the joint and and let the beat play from the joint. That would be nice. You know what oh, I mean? Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but what's crazy, man, is I tell people when they ask about just what uh, Caesar was saying, is like, you have to really want to do this, man. Like, I remember I had a house, a four-bedroom house, but when I was, you know, uh, uh, when I was going back in New York, dealing with boy and dealing with Nasheen, Nasheen, I used to sleep either on the couch or Nasheen would let me have his bed. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's just about the grind. 
what you're willing to put in. Even I was dealing with the Wu Tang, you know, we'd be four or five to a hotel room. I'm right. full of air, watching <laughs> kids, but you know, you sleeping where you where you can, you know what I mean? Yeah. Same thing when dealing with 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 uh, when, when me and um Yo Gotti was running tough. We was back and forth from New Orleans, different places in New York, and you know we four to a hotel room. Somebody grabbed a couch, you got double beds. We grinding trying to get it in. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. right. So you That's... you really gotta step out, like you said, step outside your comfort zone. And a lot of times you gotta go to these places. Like uh, I'm working on a project now where I'm driving back and forth from San Antonio to Austin. It's not bad, but. When you've been in the studio all day to four or five in the morning, yeah. you got yeah. to go back and you're like, okay, what am I doing? You know what I mean? Right. But that's a part of the job. That's the gig. That's what right. we do. That's what we love. Um, but see, you, you got to have that. I love about. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, nah, go ahead. Oh, okay. No, nah, I was nah, just, just saying. Yeah, you go. Ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just you go ahead. You go ahead. No, I just wanted to say one thing I love about this particular era is the collaboration and the technology, right? And, like, I reached out to a lot of guys on YouTube site. Um, Av, uh, my guy CMP, like, I've actually called these guys and had questions. And I know it's bizarre that they're like, this dude, you know, calling me. Shout out to Av and CMP, too, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's my guy. You, um... I'm always willing to learn, and you can learn from anybody. Like, like I said, I watch all y'all channels and the tips and pointers y'all give the people are, are great tips and pointers, even for a guy like me. You know, things are new, so you can always, as long as you're willing to learn, man, you're going to be both. You're going you gonna, to listen. Dad be for real to the kids outside. <laughs> hey, <laughs> kids outside. For real. They, they do anything. But, man, yeah, I'm always willing to learn. And willing to offer and teach what I know, you know. Well, see, that's a that's fundamental. Dope. That's the fundamental part of like, you know, what I'm saying, just the culture and like just growing. Period. You know, we're on this earth and we we're always continuing to learn. You know, what I'm saying that's how you that's how you advance. Right. So you know, what I'm saying right. like be, the the stuff that you the accolades you have, like we learn from you. Like we just got some golden nuggets from you, and like you learning from us. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's that's how things turn full circle. That's you know, so for everybody that's, that's in everybody that's in the chat, you know, what I'm saying like just I, I just tell them don't be afraid to put yourself out there, man, and like you know just right. just learn from everybody. You know, I I think we all get sometimes we get in the stage like you know because obviously I'm not I'm not uh. 6th July Brody, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, if I was like, you know, on a on a stage like you were, you know, it'd be like, I don't have to learn nothing from these little young new guys. Nah, you know, crazy, they gonna right? me. That's the people, you know, but sometimes people, we get it's stuck like in our that. ways. Yeah, we get stuck yeah. in our ways, man. And that's the, that's the, that's the fast track to, to fall into the bottle, honestly, you know, because you I'll always have you to be a student. A, a secret. Listen, Go ahead. when it comes to playing artist beats, I can never pick the beats, right? Yeah. It's, it's like a hit and miss because, you know, they'll, they'll, I just have to play you everything or I have to make you something. But I'm always kind of a little <laughs> reluctant to play my beats for certain people. You know what I'm saying? Because you just mm-hmm. never know what people like. So yeah. I just mm-hmm. rather play you every. It, you know, I, I'm I'm funny like that. You would think that I'm not, but I'm 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 critical of myself, and I always want to know what people think about my music. Yeah, you know what right. I'm saying. So I will send you something and ask you what you think, and I know people are like, man, bro, you got this, that. And like, yeah, I do, but I still want to know what you think about the joint. And my feelings don't get hurt. Right. You don't like it. You don't like it. You know, we just make you something else. But I want right. to know what, what what it's like. You know, give me the real. Mm-hmm. Let me know. That's how I can improve and get better. I can't improve and, and get better if you just, you know, shining me like, yeah, dog, it's dope. Nah, if it ain't dope, it ain't dope. Tell me the real. And I, I think yeah. that's an important point um, because what I do hear from you, um, it's interesting because you know when I pay attention to the beat you're making <laughs> lately, um, it, it's a mix. Some of it kind of reminds me of of you know the stuff I came up listening to you from, and then there's mm-hmm. also you know, you're incorporating some more modern elements, you know what I'm saying? More trap drums, more kind of 
and, and which is interesting because I mean you're you're from Memphis, so you were there kind of from, from the, the beginning South, of that style. Yeah, yeah like, yeah. Uh, but that but that's not the music I heard from you coming up. So it's so it it's so interesting to me, like, um, well, that, you have to go that, go to the go go to the Yo Gotti's in the three six because I program Stay Fly and eight other records on that most known unknown album. Yeah, man, mm. like I said, bro, such I'm, a classic record, man. I, I I grew up like that. Right? Was, they three so, six like, mafia basically raised me, man. <laughs> <I'm just laughs> yeah, hey, I love it. Like, like I said, you know, they're incredible producers. They got great ear for and they love sampling, and that's what we gel that. We both love sampling, and they like the way that I program certain samples or whatnot. So we we take it like that. Um, mm. and I worked for them for a nice little while. Um. Those are my guys, incredible producers. Two of them, some of the most talented guys that I know, just their ear and how they produce records. And even um Yo Gotti records were kind of out of my element. You see what I'm saying? But I'm from yeah. the South, I can do that. You know, right. um a lot of people don't know that. But I'm, you know, I really don't have a, a style or a sound. I just like making beats, man. I'm just a beat maker. Whatever the job calls for, that's what I'm doing. And I, right. I, I and, just, and I, I just like yeah, just, just, just now that he said that, I just want to like touch on that right now too, because like over the mm. the, the the last couple uh, episodes, this keeps coming up. The passion, man. I'm gonna keep saying mm. that passion. Like you, you, you can't be successful at anything really if you don't have passion for it too, man. Like, cause a lot of these, right. uh, like right. a lot of people that are, like been successful doing stuff that they're doing like that we had, had on the on the podcast man like they all mm-hmm. express the same feelings like the passion like i would do it for no money i like i would you know yes. i just want the experience you know what i'm saying all mm-hmm. the other stuff like kind of falls in place when you're doing it but you still i'm not saying to just do it for the passion and not be smart because you do want to you know learn the business and stuff like that right. so you don't so you don't cheat yourself but at the same time like That's right. the the whole the whole thing around it is like the passion and, and the love for it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's what makes it. That's what makes a great product, man. And that's what like helps you, like ex- help you excel in the game. So mm-hmm. I just wanted I to agree. point that I out. Man. I and, and, and I've too, seen um, you. You've done things like with um, with Royce. I remember his last album. Right. Uh, he was talking about it's his first album. He was producing himself. Yeah. And he talked about how you know you were such a crucial part of that process of him learning how to, you know, how to make beats um, and, and really getting better at it and actually producing a commercially released album. So um, what's, I think that was interesting because you're willing to come out of your uh, element as kind of the head honcho producer in the studio and, and mm. help someone work on their production skills. You know what I mean? In, in a yeah, professional yeah. setting. I thought that was very interesting. So how, how did that work out for you? Was that just, he's such a good friend. You're 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 yeah, fine with doing that, or I'll I'll do it for you know especially for him. I was glad to see him make, make that transition, but I'll do it for anybody because I, I I'm um in the process of getting back to teaching kids how to make beats, right? Okay. Because I I love it so much. But um to when when I went to Detroit, when his manager Kino called me like, yo, we need to get this album done. You know, I just went out there to listen to what he had because he was telling me he was producing. And when I heard it, I was like, yo, this is it's crazy. You know, my job from there was just to help him put it together. You know, it, mm-hmm. it, was, it was a very long album, and we had to cut it down. He wasn't happy about that, but we had to make it make sense. Um, yeah. We did, a, we did a couple of things as far as, you know, me doing some extra programming. And uh, like uh, um, even with the um, the Black Savages record, he had the sample, and I remember waking up like, "What's that?" And he had it going, and, and we kind of started formulating it. And I was like, "Well, speed it up." And he sped it up, and it, it started to come together. Then you know, I put some drums on it, and uh, he ended up taking those drums off and putting his pattern on it, and that's the one that he went with. But it was a great process to see him go through it because. You know, when you first started making beats, and I think Mr. Porter said this too, you're in such a raw state that your mistakes are going to be great. Right? Mm, yeah. Because you yeah. have you're just filter. going off the vibe. Yeah, yeah. you just off the vibe. He just learned how to sample and, and getting into the logic programming and all of that. So 
it wasn't no filter. He didn't have nothing holding him back, so he could just let loose. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. And when you get a little season on you, you start thinking about what you're doing, and that's one of the problems. Why you know people having mm-hmm. making a transition, unless you're like yeah, a primo or something, you know he just do what he do. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah. Primo is like such a strong producer brand that it yeah. makes sense for him to stay in his ways in a lot mm-hmm. of ways. I mean, he still changes yeah. as we talked about. He's got a channel. He's opening up a little more, and he's he's yeah. using one of his strengths, which is which is his history in the game, to to yeah. to stay current, which I think is phenomenal because it, it it really uh, it's it's just like, it's like a treasure trove for the culture. You know what I mean? And and I I think right. with you, you know, what I'm saying I'm sure. You know, we'll talk about this later um, where, you know, I'm sure you have so many stories and 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 gems that can come from these stories that it's a, it would almost be a crime to not, you know, give that back to to the culture who really studies these things. You know what I mean? Um, but I, right. I just going back to what you were saying about Royce uh, and that project, I, I just want the audience to know, like, you know, we're talking about a gentleman. That's a Grammy on your hat. Right. Like, <laughs> That's yeah, a Grammy yeah. hat he's got on. Like, that's, that's a my- Grammy w- award winning, you know, yeah. platinum producer yeah. with yeah. 20 plus years experience who is humbling himself enough mm-hmm. to help another artist learn to produce. And we're talking about the allegory, which is, you know, arguably like last year, one of the most critically acclaimed albums that came out. You know what I'm saying? So one of the ways yeah, to Grammy stay relevant. Nominated. That was his first uh, Grammy nomination. Grammy nomination. Wow. And, you know, it, you, yeah. you're talking about, I mean, it's just a phenomenal album. And fr- from a critical standpoint, from an artistic standpoint. So w- it just it, it showed me that part of staying relevant is being willing to, you know, compromise as far not not be Mr. I'm going to do everything. I'm going to control everything. It's being able to get in the lab and work with other mm-hmm. artists and other talented people. And that that's really that's really the job of a producer, right? Is is to take talent and right. help that's them right. shape it. Yeah. That's right. And that's the difference between a producer and a beat maker. You know, that argument comes up. I, and I tell people I'm a, I love making beats, I love sampling. But when I finish making a beat, we gotta make a record. We gotta figure mm-hmm. out what hook works best, what lyric works best. If we need to bring in the instrumentation, right? Um, like uh, I brought my guy Ari Morris to um, to mix the allegory because mm-hmm. you know it was you know, we in there, me and Royce and Mr. Porter. We do what I do is what we do, and it's great. But I'm like, listen, it, it this who this who needs to mix this record, and I'm glad yeah. that he trusted me on it because you know it was both of their first Grammy nomination, Ari and uh, Royce. Wow, that's dope. and him as a you know producer artist, it probably was my little flex. It probably was my fifteenth. <laughs> uh, that's my little hey, man, you know, you know, and, 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 humble flex. You know, with, with my little pen, you gotta, you, you gotta. You, I was on the board at one point. You gotta know somebody to get one of these pens. Everybody get one of these. Guys. But yeah, yeah. Um, but 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 that's what it's all about, right? Being able to, and that's one thing I have to say I learned from Puff and Nasheen is being able to put records together and knowing when to say okay. The keyboard string might not be dope. We might might need to put together a joint. You know what I mean? Call mm-hmm. it call it the 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 quartet or something. Put together some musicians to lay some live strings or some live drums and you know what I mean? Yeah. Things like that. Yeah, and and I think that's that's a crucial part of maturing as a producer is is being able to take your ego out of it and look mm-hmm. at what's going to make the record the best what's going to be the best for yeah, the right. overall project for now what's going to be best for your publishing now what's going to be best right. for your you know your your pocket right. but fine just just becoming a resource in the studio mm-hmm. to make the records better and that's that's when people want you around that's when you get those phone calls because at this point it's not it's not you know uh, uh you know brody's gonna come in here and try to dominate the session it's like nah he's if the beat, you know, if, if the drums mm-hmm. need to get taken out, he's not going to, you know, have nothing crazy to say about it. He's going to, you know, use his resources mm-hmm. with his engineers. Being a toolbox and using all the tools in your toolbox as a producer um, is, right. is just it's a cheat right. code, you know. And, and I'm saying that from watching no you doubt. and watching some of the greats, you know, that that's something I picked up from y'all. And I, I'm, I'm very grateful that 
you're confirming it here, you know? Yes, yes. And now, yeah, man, listen, go ahead. Uh, go ahead, finish your thought, because I got a question for you after. No, go ahead, you go ahead. I I'm just babbling. <laughs> oh, no, I was, I was going to say, like, because, you know, one of the things that I want to, that uh, we also want to capture is like, you know, you growing up and maturing into like who you are now, like where, where are some of the biggest, like, uh, like lessons you've taken away from like your journey and things that people could pro possibly apply, you know, uh, in the modern, like in the modern age to like, maybe like uh, be on a path that you're on, that you've been on, you know? Great question. Right. Um, to be honest with you, oh. I never had fun making records that I made, the history that I made. It, was, it wasn't really fun for me because, you know, you're trying to make your mark, and I kind of um, I wasn't in the moment. Okay. Right? You're amongst all yeah. of these great people, Notorious B.I.G., Kim, Puffy, you know, all these hitmen. Uh, like Wu-Tang is like my family, Ray and Ghost and, and RZA and Tyreef and all of them, Cash Divine. You know, you're you're trying to make such an impact and trying to make these, you know, make your mark. You miss the moment. I no, remember, okay. um, I remember sitting in the studio with Big, and um, what what's crazy is when we were mixing Queen Bitch, I played Biggie "Can't Nobody Hold Me Down" beat because I made it for him. Wow. And I remember him telling me it's dope, but Ice Cube had just did for the Check Yourself re uh, remix with mm -hmm. Doss. And he was like, it's too soon, yep. but it's dope. And, you know, he played me his verse from My Downfall. And I just remember that particular moment. And then another moment, I remember um, me and him in the studio. I had a lot of moments with Big by my, like, one-on-one. -on -one. Me and him in the studio listening to... Um, the skeleton to um when Nash had just laid it down, Nashim just laid it down to mix bleed. And I think he just got back from Amsterdam. He was had this blunt in his hand. <laughs> and I noticed he would he would never hit this blunt. And needless to say, one of the moments, you know, he said, Lost your smoke. And I'm like, yeah, a little bit. He was like, yeah, okay, hit this. And I hit it twice. And the next thing I know, I woke up in the room, and it was uh, <laughs> it wasn't regular. It was it was some hashish. It wasn't, you know. Uh, and I was like, oh, that's no. why you wasn't hitting that joint. Like it's, it's, uh -huh. it's just but just those moments, I wish I could have lived in them more. Mm -hmm. and, and what I say to people, um, I always tell cats: make sure you love what you're doing and have fun. Like I said, uh, yeah. sampling and making beats is a fun time for me. It kept me out of It's most of my cat, the, you know, killers and drug dealers. But yeah. making beats kept me out. Like I said, one of my cat, he was in the streets. He bought my first SB-1200. Um, so <laughs> that kept me out the streets making beats and, and sampling and, and doing things like, you know, doing music. So I always tell cats, make sure you're having fun doing what you're doing because I missed a lot of moments just trying to make my mark. You know, okay. yeah. I should have had a lot of pictures of a lot. Like, just think about pictures of a Kim or no Young and Capone in man. the studio, right? In bro, I mean, you know what I mean, man, those things would be solid gold right now, bro. Just, just exactly. you know, from, from a cultural perspective, like, you know, you're talking about like, you know, Great mm -hmm. Day in Harlem, you know, what I'm saying type type vibes, and right, you know, I, I think it it yeah. brings back. Um, one of the motivations for my my channel, I tell people sometimes, <laughs> is I want my kids to be able to look back at the work that I did, and I want there to be a That's record right. of the things, who I was. You know, Lord forbid something happened to me. Right. I want people to know what I stood for, what type of stuff I was into, what, you know, what, uh, you know, I just want people to be familiar with my work. And right. even though you you do have a record, you know, you, you have these records where people can hear your works but like you're talking about is more capture the moment and bro I, i'm i'm there with you like those days it was to get the camera out my face days you know what i'm saying yeah. we weren't we, we didn't have polaroids in the lab right, like exactly you know what i'm saying a lot of cats was in the street we weren't you yeah. know in the, in the streets and it was like yo why are you taking pictures of me dog like so a lot of moments mm -hmm. were missed in those years and i can only imagine the scale of yours you know what i'm saying like you, you talking about yeah being I mean, in the studio with other crazy. legends I'm telling, yeah. private like 
Yeah. Yeah. Them but I know now they all probably wish they had a, more of a record of it. Yeah, yeah. What's, what's crazy too, um, like uh, this era versus my era, I'm still kind of was there. forced I to change my battery to know who the producer was. Okay, you want me to wait? No, go no, ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, you kind of had to know who the producer was back in the day because it, it it really wasn't that many like it is nowadays. Mm-hmm. And one thing um, I wish the artists would do more is give credit to the producer. You know. Um, even saying their name in interviews or, or you know doing shows whatnot, and that that's where a lot of the young guys got innovative with the beat tags because cats yeah. wasn't credited a producer on the records. You know, mm-hmm. producer is just important as, as the rapper. You can't rap a cappella your whole project. You know what I mean? Right. So, get the cats they flowers, man. These cats work hard making sure you got your vibe. You know. Well, see, I, that's one thing I like about the new culture, too. It's like, you know, you see, like, these producers, like, really branding themselves. And, like, you know, you got, like, that's right. DJ DJ Khaled is, like, he's a producer. But, like, you know, like, like he he makes his own tapes. So, like, you, his, right. he'll have an album that's DJ Khaled. And then he'll have a whole bunch of artists on it. You know, I just yeah. seen uh, Hitman. Hit, uh, Hitman. Hit like, Boy. Uh, yeah, Hit Boy. Wait, he wait, do, he, Hit Boy. You, that's you're right, boy. Hit Boy. But like him and Big Sean, like they they're doing a collaboration right now, and like Hit Boy right. is like in all his videos and stuff like that. Like right. I like I like seeing that. You know what I'm saying? Because like you like you said, like the producers don't get as much recognition, but they they basically the whole most of the whole vibe is is like created by the producer. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because like mm-hmm. the the lyrics and all that stuff is dope. You know what I'm saying? But it, it takes that type of vibe. You know what I'm saying? Or like you know you guys vibing off each other. You know, right? If somebody got a great hook. Right. You know, you still got to try to bring that to life. So, but with the modern mm-hmm. age, I do like seeing that a lot, and you see that a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like um, in the new age, like I really like what Hit Boy and uh, Big Sean is doing right now. You know, and I always right. I I've been a fan of DJ Cali. People want to rag on him all they want but like the stuff that dj cali like comes out with and how he can like get artists and like like bring together like a, a an album or you know what i'm saying yeah. a, a track that's like a producer he's, it, he's dope at that mm-hmm. you know yeah it, it's just like it's just like um like what puff was doing that you don't necessarily have to touch the drum machine or the other or the, or the program to be a producer yeah. But you do have to have an ear for music and knowing how to put things together and who to put mm-hmm. in what room with who, you know what I mean? Yeah. And 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 it's, hell, he might go to old Caesar like, yo, I, I heard his beat, you gotta go to site. Yo, I, I, I wanna use this beat. You know what I'm saying? For I, I hear this artist on it, I hear the baby on it, you know what I mean? That's mm-hmm. you putting it together. You know, the producer's job is from start to finish, right? Yeah. Um, if you're not a, a physical programming, you know, drummer, beat making producer, you picking the beat, you putting the artist on there, you got to know who mixing, you got to take it, know who, who who's going to be best to master that particular record, you know, and even from there, you're going to have to know what DJ to go to and what the visual is going to look like for the record. So the produ- right. producer's job really don't never stop. It goes from a record producer to executive producer, you know what I mean? Right, <laughs> you're doing your own absolutely. Thing. You got to do it. And you've done a little of that too, right? You, you've done your, yeah. your fair share of executive producing as well. Yeah. Um, uh, I was supposed to be on the allegory as an executive producer, but hey, you know. Things <laughs> um, uh, but I definitely was of uh, Death is Certain Royce's album and um, Independent Day and uh, a lot of Dark Man, which was, which was me and Tyrese, uh, Tyrese Supreme, that was our artist. Uh, he was a Wu Tang Wu Tang affiliate artist. Uh, artist. Um, there's a couple of a couple of records I, I've executive produced, but it's not much different. You just putting it together. You know? It's it's um, like a, kind of like a just a little bit bigger scope. You're helping them do a little more of the, I guess. Uh, everything. Helping them pull it. Yeah, more, more, everything. Yeah, because <laughs> everything. It's not just your production. You're you got to make sure all of the production is right. You're sequencing mm-hmm. the album. Um, in some cases, it's a young artist from Memphis, Action Pack AP. Hell, I was uploading the YouTube songs and videos at one point. You know what I mean? Mm, um, yeah, yeah, I've been there too. 
I mean, that's yeah, how I got so, into all this visual stuff is, you know, I signed exactly. artists and, you know, before mm. you know it, I'm, I'm doing their album covers. I'm uploading mm-hmm. this stuff to, you know, uh, different online providers and stuff. So, you know, we have right. to put on different hats as producers. It, it, it's just it kind of comes with the territory. But is there ever a point where you kind of like drew the line where it's like, all right, I, I'm not going to do that. Like, I'm not going to do that that much. I wasn't I'm not big on signing artists for one. I don't want nobody signed sign to me. I'm a handshake type of guy or I'm a partnership type of guy, right? Mm-hmm. I believe in partnering up with people. I don't want your publishing. I don't want, you know what I mean? You yeah. take what's yours, I'm going to take what's mine, and, and we're going to split it, if anything. You know, a right. lot of people say that's not smart business, but I, I'm just not, that's not my forte. If I'm going to deal with an artist, we're going to 50-50. And you do your part, I'm going to do my part. You're not signing me, I'm not signing you. But we can right. make an obligation to do this project together. You know, what's one thing I, I learned from Yo Gotti? Um, one of the things Yo Gotti had a problem with was, you know, at a, at a time when he was trying to get signed, people were wanting to sign him. He had his producers. He had, you know, Drummer Boy, Swizzo, Insane Wayne, yep. and myself. Slash T was mixing. And um we had a certain sound for for Gotti and uh when he was trying to get signed people were wanting to sign him and they didn't want to partner with him and he wanted a partnership you know what I mean whereas yeah. I'm gonna pay he wanted to even pay for half I'm gonna pay my half for the album use my guys you pay for the other half of the album use your guys you know what I mean let's do mm-hmm. it that way and uh I was I was fond of how he um did business in that sense you know and aside from the things that we taught each other you know publishing game and i was uh instrumental when making him switch d88s to pro tools Uh, (laughs) (laughs) he he didn't like pro tools at first and i made him buy him a pro tools system because it was just easier yeah but what he was doing Mm -hmm. um but yeah man um that that's been my thing. Always not wanting to sign artists and have them bogged down, or you know what I mean. That's just no fun. Yeah, and, and it's, that's it's not fun people ask, me. you know, why I don't I don't try to get placements or I don't uh, I don't have artists anymore and things like that. Mm-hmm. It, it's just, I mean, first of all, a, a, a lot of artists have the egos are kind of crazy. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like, the ego, yeah. the especially in the like, rap game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So you know, you're dealing with egos, and then. A lot of times when you sign artists, you find yourself managing them too, like where you're right. double checking. Oh, make sure you're on the way to the studio. Yeah, right. You know, we got a session that's on. Right. Yep. I don't so, you know, babysit. so it, it, it gets it gets pretty involved when you're dealing with artists. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Say I don't want to babysit. babysit. And, and I, that's, I, babysit. I got kids. Like, you, you know when you're supposed to be at yeah. the studio, man. Like, come on, man. Like, why I got to go through this with you? You know? Yeah. Um, right. One thing about one thing about the YouTube man it is so dope is you guys can make your own music, right? Your own channel, your own audience, and y'all can sell your merch, your product, your music, and you can yep. make yourself your own artist. Just listen. Yep. I would that's, love that's what nothing. I'm touching on. Yeah, I would love nothing in the world but to sit up and make beats on YouTube and get paid for it. That's like the ultimate job to me. You see what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. You don't have mm-hmm. to deal with no crazy artists. You don't have to deal with the record companies and their BS because it's a lot of BS we're dealing with them. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? You wanted it, and you know you're not you're not going to let yourself down. That that's been the biggest thing yeah, exactly. for me is I've been lied to by artists. I've been lied to by A and R's. I've been lied to by all these different people in the industry, but I never mm-hmm. lied to myself. So I said, you know, I'm just going to make myself the artist as a producer. Mm-hmm. I may, and and this is similar to what Khaled did, you know, and I tell people, you know, they might not like Khaled because of technically he might not be the greatest producer, but what he did is he made himself the artist too. He made himself and he's the most right, you know, and he, he collabs with other artists. You can come on his album. It's his album. Mm -hmm. You're coming to collab on his album. So there's something to be said for that. Like you said, you know, in this day and age, you can make yourself the talent all around. And just mm-hmm. focus on yourself and you can, you know, you can make a sustainable business that way. Um, and it leads mm-hmm. to other opportunities. It's not like you have to stay on that, but right. um, th- there's something that comes from taking all these skills that you normally use. I tell people I spent so much of my career helping other people 
that mm-hmm. it, it's almost like I wasted 10 years. I don't say wasted, but I put 10 years of my yeah. life into other people's careers when I could have been putting it into mine and more opportunities might have came from that. So and I'm going to touch, you know, I'm gonna touch just, on that too. Yeah, go ahead. Because like, honestly, you know what I'm saying? Um, I think it's great to work with different artists and stuff. And I still, I still want to, but like, right. if, if you're going to work with, if you're going to work with artists, you got to make sure that they're serious and that they're actually doing what they they say they are, because there's a lot mm-hmm. of people out here that try to get one over on you, but just going back, you know, cause a lot, I have people like in Grand Rapids now, cause you know, I, I, I mix and stuff too, that okay. want to work with me, but right. I just, I, I won't because like I'm working on building my brand. Like, you know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with wanting to build yourself up and then going back and working with people later. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, uh, at the end of the day, like, like you said, everybody's got a lot of responsibilities, man. When you really, when you really like with the team aspect is, it's good, but you, you find yourself like, you know what I'm saying? Um, what you call that, you know, where you're, where you're, uh, trying to, you know, cater to other people's needs and stuff too like when Mm -hmm. you know when you know you you know the straight shot that you need to take and you and you usually don't take it all the time because you're trying to please other people you know what i'm saying and and do that so like i like there's no reason why people can't be their own boss and and do the stuff that they need to do and uh you know what i'm saying and get your stock up right like that's that's how i look at yeah, that's how I look at it. What I'm doing now is I'm getting my stock up, you know. That's so right. you say you're saying it better. I than do me work right with now. the artists again. I already right. got a platform. No, no mm-hmm. it's what you're saying, but it's, it's kind of what I came no, to the no. conclusion of, of is I'm going to build my own stock up. And if I never work with another artist, that's fine. But if I you do, I at least got my own platform. So I'm bringing more to the right. table. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And, that, and that's what's so dope. Right. And that's that's what I, you know, aspire to get to having my own platform. Like I said, where right? like, just make beats on my own channel and, and do my thing, you know, and this this technology is, is affording a way for us to do that. And that's great. You know, a lot of times I tell people, hey, you got to have thick skin to be in this business and you got to really want to be in this business because you're going to run across some things that's going to make you question like, man, what am I doing? And why yeah. is it like this? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, I tell mm-hmm. people, it, 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 you, you you don't know the struggle until you're dealing with invoices that's 30, 45 days out and you already done the work, but you can't get paid for 30, 45 days and you done done like 20 records. You know what I mean? You're waiting on <laughs> right. those checks to right. come in. You know, you got to make them phone calls to, to your lawyers and your lawyer. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not all what, what people think it is. You know, or waiting on royalties, like Go said, is like waiting on babies. You yeah. know, because this, <laughs> this, Man. the system is flawed, right? Because, you know, back in my day, the reason you waited on, you know, royalties is because when you released the album, cassette, or CD, they would send it out early, like press up a million and send out a million, and you have what they call returns. So if you get mm-hmm. 100,000 returns, you have to account for that on the hard unit. So you really couldn't put out the money until you accounted for everything sold. Well, now on a digital scale, everything is MP3s and waves. There are no returns. You can't return no wave, no MP3, so why are we still on a six-month system? Yeah, right. what I'm saying? It don't make sense. Yep. Everything should be 30, 45-day turnaround, but yeah. you're still yep. waiting on all these royalties for six months. I mean, I know the game. Like nine times out of ten, they holding their money in the escrow account. The longer they hold it, yeah. the money they make. But yeah, right. It's it's they're flawed, investing man. it, it's, making a return yeah. on the money that they owe you. Yeah, it's just like just like a bank. Yeah, no doubt. So you know that's one of the things I don't like. I'm the type of cat mm-hmm. I like to get paid every week. I like to get a check every week. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So facts. That, yeah, you, and and if you make your own way with your product placements, your, your endorsements, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. your partnerships, you can do. Man, y'all y'all in a great time. For producers, artists, this is a great time to capitalize yeah. on technology, man. And, and I, I think what's dope, Brody, is is you're such an influence on on so many of us in this community. You know, you're talking about CMP, you know, uh, Ad McCree. Um, yeah. All of us are, are so <laughs> grateful to just even, you know, kind of have yeah, you yeah. as as somebody we can reach out to that I'm all of us, I'm sure, are going to. Any anything you need, bro. Any way we can help, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, we're I definitely here, man. So 
I'm yeah, saying that I'm, I'm saying that on the I will right. You. I'm saying it on the pod because you can hold you can hold me to it. And and you know yeah, I've talked man. to CMP about it a couple times because we were both blown away. You know that you, that you were so active in the community. Um, you know, with, with just just so much, you know, what I'm saying just yeah, just so bro, much yeah. to your resume, man. It's it's really a blessing, man. So it's the same thing, you know. What? Like, yeah, it was skiing. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, bro. No, nah, because I was just saying, you guys, because you guys are like, man, when you look at like the things that you've done, bro. Like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm still like, you know, like I remember like when we got off with with ski, bro. And I'm probably gonna mm -hmm. be the same way when I get when we get off with you. Like it's like, bro. Do you know the fuck we just? You know, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know bro. Be, we just yeah. had, we just had, yeah. we just had ski on here, bro. Now we got, yes, you know, Carlos. You know what I'm saying? And it's yeah, not like man. it's not, but it's like it's it's not fan. It, it ain't fame fanboy stuff, but it is fanboy no. stuff because you know you look at these yeah. people. You, we look at people like you, and we look up to to y'all. But y'all also watching us, man. Y'all still I like you know. Yeah, because I'm a fan too. Like this is this is our thing in our community. So if we're not fans mm -hmm. of each other, then what are we doing? Like, man, you guys are right. doing some great things. I love ski too. Ski is dope. You know, it's funny because ski being from North Carolina, right? And me being mm -hmm. from Memphis, New York wasn't receptive of outsiders back in the day. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But, and the thing, even we Jersey, we, like, if we came up from Jersey, they was like, man, you on, over man. the river, dude. You over the bridge, dude. Go hey, back yeah, over the yeah. bridge, homie. <laughs> Except it was a little, it was a little yeah, more curses yeah. than that. So you, you really had to have some skills, like and Primo from Texas. You see what I'm saying? So you really yeah. had to know what you was doing in order to impress, you know, the New York scene, the East Coast, mm -hmm. which we know and love. So man, yeah, man. But back to you guys, you guys are doing a, like I sit up days and just watch all y'all videos. Just go down the line. When I see the new ones, I get my notifications and. I, just go in and watch him. That's and, love, and hit my, man. my thumbs up button. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's, That's love, man. man. We That's... definitely appreciate it, man. Sure. Like, like I said, and and this is we're gonna go back to this is because, like, you know, there's a lot of people out there that's scared to put yourself out, man. This is the type of stuff that you can right. do. You know, when you when you're like branding yourself and creating something that's bringing value to people, because that's all we want to do is bring value to people. We're just, we're trying to help producers because we're also learning. I like I want to I want to get to a place to where I can have placements and stuff like that. And I want to get my stuff out there. And that's why right. I'm building this. And, you know, also trying to help people like learn the no stuff doubt. that, you know, because I didn't like even me coming up you know it was it was a lot better than you guys coming up but i didn't have a lot of people to teach me stuff either i like learned everything right. by myself you know so i want to i want to mm -hmm. help people be better you know what i'm saying and if i can help you that's learn right. faster and get to it quicker you know that's 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 better for me man it makes me feel great that i was able to help help somebody yeah, because sure. i remember not having that help man you right. know yeah right Big you know and and, and 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 me too um going back in the day like my my elders or uncles or the old old schoolers they couldn't teach me nothing about an NPC. Yeah, you know what I mean. I remember I yeah. remember when I I got my nine fifty with my SP twelve hundred, and I sampled something and it wouldn't play out, and I couldn't get it to play out for the life of me. And I remember Trial Call Quest was dealing with Bob Powers, right? Mm -hmm. And I knew they recorded at Battery Studio, so I called Battery Studio. And asked to speak to Bob Powers, and he got on the phone. Wow! <laughs> and I said, "Look, you don't know. This is how I always been. I call anybody. I was like, look, you don't know me, but man, I just bought an SP twelve hundred and a nine fifty, and I can't get the nine fifty to play out." He was like, "Oh, what you want to do is go in and hit the one shot button." And I was like, "Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, Yo, that's amazing, like, bro!" Go through the menu. Yeah, he was like, "Go through the menu and find the the sample edit and hit the one shot, and it's gonna play." And I did it, and it played. And I was like, "Oh, that's incredible!" But just, <laughs> I've always been that type of person. Like, like I said, I'm camera shy, so the camera thing, you know, is new to me, and I'm, I'm putting mm. myself out there. But I've always been the type of person to reach out to people, and I love connecting people. You know, that's been my thing. So I'm always, I'm a phone call guy. I'm always getting on the phone to call whoever I need. And I hope that right. everybody will do me the same. You know, you got my number, call me. I'm going to answer whatever questions you got, whatever you need. You know, it's the same with me. That's dope. 
That's dope. Yes, well, yeah, bro, we we had you on here. It's going on two hours, man. We ain't gonna take up too much okay. of your Sunday. It's, it, I'm, I'm sure good. we can go for days, I man. You, I'm back out yeah, boogieing right now, so you know. <laughs> yeah, and, and it looks like it's a beautiful yeah, family day out there, man. Like it, it got yeah, it got pretty cold yeah. out here in Georgia, but I, I think y'all yeah, got some yeah. nice weather out there right now. Yeah, I'm I'm too old for that side. So I'm through with that. I don't want no problems. <laughs> no weather. I've had enough. Man, I'm and, dealing with it right now. We had we had snow, bro. Yesterday. No, yeah, we had snow. Nah, I'm good. I'm good off snow. Christmas, you feel me? <laughs> nah. nah, I'm good. I put my little, I put some little white tinsel on a tree or something, with some spray foam or something. But you know, in Georgia, in Georgia, it's gonna probably heat back up tomorrow. Though. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's bipolar weather. I tell people I, I keep, I keep a hoodie and a pair of pants and a pair of shorts in my vehicle at all times because yes, at any given time it, it could, you know, it could heat back up. But um, no, nah, bro, it's, it's been such a blessing having you on here, man. And um, I, I'm sure we're going to have to do it again because I'm sure we missed some questions and we missed some yeah, things that we... Yeah, we scratch the surface on the music. You know what I mean? For real. That's I'm like, man, we just got, you know, a little bit. And, and then the gear, too. So I'm sure, you know, uh, we'll, we'll have to do yes, this sir. do this some more, man. But um, thank you so much for coming on, man. Let's let's talk about some of the things that you're working on. Yeah, um, you. your, your son, Cassius Magnum, is your latest artist. Um, yeah. And, you're, and, and you're, yeah, you, you know, course, you're working yeah. with him. And you say you can find him at Cassius Magnum on Instagram? Uh, he is on Instagram. He is um, starting on YouTube. Um, he's on my Instagram and my YouTube. Um, it's crazy because he doesn't let me do nothing. I think he got maybe <laughs> one or two of my beats. You know what wow. Because but, but he's he, producing he too, right? It. Like you taught him. Yeah, he's he produced like he, he produced a few of the action pack AP records with me. He's on the first three albums that we did. Um, okay. but he'll make sure I oversee everything and make sure everything is right. So that's dope. But when it comes to production, he's like, no, nah, he don't, he don't, I can maybe do one or two. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's but crazy. Yeah, Cassius, I got Cassius Magnum, my son. And then, um, James Robinson, we're doing an R and B project, R and B hip hop project. I got a um my guy I call him the uh he's a uh this Irish this Irish Scottish kid eight oh eight will with mm-hmm. the red hair and all of that he's pretty dope I'm working with him as well and um so y'all doing I'm like some collab stuff nah he um I record and uh do mixing for him and do some beats for him as well so I'm with nice. doing one of the artists I'm doing shit with like you said a collab you know. Um, and then making my rounds, I hope I can get on, uh, um, well, we did the, the Lambda Lambda joint with Royce. I did that joint. Okay. okay. The, the, the Lupe disc record. I ain't fond of disc records, but you know. Oh it's, yeah. It's yeah. I was just listening yeah. to that too, man. That was, uh, that was <laughs> D. Yo, he went in on those bars too, bro. That was, I said. Yeah, bananas. But you know what I'm going to say to him. You know what I mean? But. Right, right. Uh, <laughs> All I know, he called me one day like, bro, can y'all mix that record? What record? That beat you sent me. When you do it, I did it last night. It's coming out tonight. I need y'all to mix it. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, man, what y'all doing? But um, I know um, Raekwon is working on Cuban League 3. And oh, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm so really you sure you still got him on the high line? Like, hey, man. Yeah, that's that's family. Um, Ray and Ghost. Ghost is working on Supreme Clientele, too. So the two records that I'm really trying to get on since I was on, you know, I wasn't on Cuban 1, but I was on uh, Immobilarity. I did Yeah, Yeah. Mm-hmm. And right. uh, on, on uh, Supreme Clientele, we made it a Saturday night. So I'm trying to repeat those vibes with them guys. Yeah. So, that's dope, you know, man. We made it was my, one of my rounds. favorite records for that joint. Yeah, Mine man. Too. You know, you, you... RZA, RZA, it's crazy, crazy story. Uh, we was going to clear the sample, and they told me, hold up, I think we own that record. And I'm like, get out of here. And they was like, well, let me check. I'm going to call you back. And they called back like, yeah, RZA owns that sample. And what was going on wow. back then, RZA had bought a lot of uh, the high unreleased catalog. So that he could, you know, sample mm-hmm. it and wouldn't have to clear it, and you know, the rest is history. So that was one of the wow. ones where he actually owned the sample. Wow, that's, <laughs> that's dope, man. Yeah, man. Rizzo's so forward thinking, man. So forward thinking, like that's crazy. I, but yeah, I've bro, I, I'm for, for 
for all of these, I want to say this real quick. I've known Lizzo for almost 20 years and met him for the first time a year ago. Like face to face. We've been on the phone and all of that, but we never met face to face. Wow. And that's last crazy, year was man. the first time I met him. Last year, or year before. I think it was the year before, but that's crazy, right? Yeah. But look, man, I'm coming to Texas within the next year, man. We got we got family out Let's there, and I got too many reasons to get out there and and chop it up, man. We got to do do a video, and just bust it up, man. So it's it's such a it's such an honor, man, to to be on with such a legend today, man. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Yeah, if you if you guys like that beats, you know, like I said, first thing we want to do is we want to thank everybody for showing your support. You know, what I'm saying we can't do the things that we do without your support. So we appreciate everybody that was here. You know, what yeah. I'm saying everybody that's been active in the comments and everything, who, people that's been supporting us. If you want to support us even further, you know, what I'm saying we got the merch NPC gang. You know, what I'm saying this Me is God. another one of the site shirts. You know what I'm saying right here. Uh, Which I am one saying, down to like, yeah, I like that one. Key, I, I, I got to send man. you an NPC I gang. Have. We we down, yeah, we down to like seven or eight uh, of the black beanie. So if you guys want in on I'm those, they're, they're yeah. wrapping up. But I, I got you, Brody. I need to, I need the camouflage snapback. The camouflage. Oh snap. yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. Yeah. I got you. I got. I think I got. I think I got two more of those in stock. So I'll shoot that out. I got to send you a standalone oh, soul too. Yeah, and that's what I was going to say, too. You know, Sites got standalone soul. You know what I'm saying? Our brother Lifted Noise couldn't be here again. He's, you know, got things going on, but we still support our brother Lifted Noise. You know, he's got merch. All that stuff yeah. is going to be in the, in, the, uh, in the description, you know. Hit the like button if you guys like this stuff, and we all have our own, like, separate channel. So if you guys want to support us, then go to our separate channels and, like, subscribe, like, you know, watch our content, even – uh, Mr. Brody has yeah. a uh, YouTube let's, let's channel. Let's get so. my subscribers up, so I can yeah, yeah, man, we gonna get that channel popping, bro. Let's, let's help. Let's help him. Yeah. Let's get his subscriber count up. Legend out here. It's it's yes, it's Carlo Six July Brody, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's yeah. It. So make sure you check him out on YouTube, and uh, yeah, we definitely gonna be doing doing some work, bro. I, I would love nothing more than to see your channel, you know, thriving and flourishing. And uh, I'm probably you know, if, like I said, and do do a photo shoot. The first ever. I've never done a photo shoot. Oh <laughs> man, yeah, I, bro, that that would be yeah, that would that would be great, man. I'd love that. We probably do do a few looks. Bring a few outfits. Bring like three or four. We'll just we'll lace it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's do it. <laughs> right I up. might have to be there for that one too. So y'all, y'all let on, me know, man. I'm gonna have to clap. Come on down, man. Get you get yourself flued out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. man. Word, but thanks everybody for tuning in today, man. We love y'all. Appreciate everybody. Catch y'all on the next one. Peace. Peace.